Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. everyone, good evening and welcome to Slamfire Radio episode 431. It is November the 18th, 2021. I am your ho- one of your hosts, Random Dave. I'm another host, Kyle. And I'm another host, Mo. And Adriel will be joining us in, I'm going to say, 10, 15. Oh, he's actually, you know, back yeah, out he of the said field. Yeah, he, he said he was going to be 15 minutes late, so... Cool. Gonna he's coming in. He's stand. coming in from, from the woods. Yeah. 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 And Kelly Fresh from the woods. What's oh, Kelly doing? Something. Kelly, last I heard, is busy looking for a new puppy. So mm. if you happen to have a size twelve, size twelve boxer puppy, I believe it was size twelve boxer puppy on Facebook, uh, and you want to mail it to the show after you know punching some holes in the carton, yeah, uh, please plat- punch some holes last time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not like last time, or Kelly will be hunting you and punching holes in you. Yeah, um, yeah just uh, email us at slamfireradio at gmail.com, and we'll give you a shipping address, and you can uh, you know, ship the boxer puppy over for Kelly. She'll be eternally yeah. grateful. Just remember, it's not a sandwich. Punch some holes in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Wow, you're a terrible human. All right. So while we wait for Adriel to show up. What We Did With Guns This Week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. And this week they have a Benelli El Lupo, L-U-P-O. It's it's, it's, it's all capitalized. It must stand for something, but I don't know what. Uh, I don't know either. Doesn't doesn't say on the ad, but uh, I don't know. How do I share my screen here? Share. Share. Come on. Come on. Share screen. I don't know what I'm doing, people. Sorry. Okay. Uh, hold on. I can He's do this with two monitors. You, you got it? Okay, you share your screen since I'm apparently incompetent. IT people should know how to share screens. So there's the rifle. <laughs> it is Benelli's first bolt action rifle, sub MOA accuracy, advanced ergonomics, shooting comfort have been carefully engineered, yada yada. It's sexy as hell. So, you know, mm-hmm. go to the show, go to the shooting, Calgary Shooting Center, buy one. It's 1800 bucks. Or I see now, and I don't know when they started doing that, but I noticed that the other day. You can do interest-free payments with Sezzle. Mm. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Go buy yourself. Uh, go buy your fancy, uh, fancy Benelli rifle. Yeah, yeah a few different cool. calibers to choose from. Yeah, thirty out six, three hundred Win Mag, two seventy, six point four Yuppie More, and uh, three hundred eight oh, Yuppie More. <laughs> yeah. So looks like a yeah, looks like a very nice rifle. So go go yeah, hook yourself up. Tell them we sent you. Mo, what have you been up to in guns? Uh, last weekend, I went to another IPSC match. It was an indoor one in uh, Joliet, Quebec. Uh, first time there. Uh, nice little place. It was a small, pretty small range, but, um, well, the ranges itself were small. Um, but uh, they had four long stages of 32 rounds, and they made it work, and... Uh, and they were fun. And this was one of the places where the forward movement is allowed in Quebec. You know, they have their special rules for everywhere. So it was it was actually nice to have like a proper if sick match in a in a Quebec range. How were you uh, able how I, I thought that was like verboten in Quebec. You no, know, it's all based on the range and what the if the CFO approves that range for forward movement. It all has to do with the <laughs> The roof baffling and all that stuff. So, so some ranges they allow forward movement, some they don't, and then none of them allow. Uh, you can none. You can go backwards. So, well, back. Um, yeah. So, so moving backward. Well, I don't even see that as long as the, uh, as long as your, uh, you know, RO is with you and safe. I don't see why that would be a problem. And I've never understood moving forward. You're getting closer to the backstop. That's better. Yeah, I can't explain. I just, I just know that these are the rules. So you can't argue it's moving with the gun because they allow lateral movement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe so. you can just turn sideways 
if there's a berm and then move laterally along the berm there, towards hey, the backstop and then engage the target. There is the gamer mentality right there. Maybe, yep. maybe, maybe for a future episode, I can get the Quebec CFO to come on the show and then we can all talk to, I believe it's a her and we can all discuss these special rules. And, uh, that would actually be interesting. We should look and see if we can get a CFO on the show just to talk about it. No, oh, there you go. I, I yeah. bet you the Alberta CFO would come on. Probably. Yeah, I bet you the Quebec yeah. one would not. Probably not. <laughs> not without a bevy of lawyers. I've been. A, have you guys ever been to the CFO meetings? I don't know if they no. do them in Quebec. They do them in Ontario once a year. They get all the clubs together, and you you go meet with the CFO, and they uh, they sort of discuss what they're doing. They sort of more talk at you than talk with you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of funny. I went to one about eight years ago, I guess, and the the CFO, whom I definitely did not particularly like, he was kind of a dick, um, he was there. And half the time he was making a comment, you'd ask him a question, you'd be like, how do my lawyers feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> he had a bunch of lawyers with him, right? Oh. So I guess they, they don't want the guy in charge to say something that, you know, possibly they shouldn't be. So the lawyers mm. answered a pile of the questions. It's interesting. Oh, but yes, uh, there you go. Uh, William Natalie is Martin. playing right now. Yeah, I just gave us the information, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look her up. I'm gonna see if I can uh, show up at her house with some donuts or something, and then invite her to the show. <laughs> <laughs> that might work. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, so for that match, uh, my friend Lou and his wife, Lisa, uh, Lisa, it was her first match, uh, cause she did her black badge the weekend before and she played it very smartly, you know, just trying to, you know, get through it cleanly and qualifying and stuff. Well, in Quebec, you have to do a second, a second match. So she's through her first, so it went well. And, uh, so that was great to see, um, I signed up for a match uh, this weekend in Ottawa at the RA Center. It's going to be my first time there. I've heard good things about that, about those matches too. I'm on the waiting list, so I hopefully I can get in. I'm like the top spot in each for like four squads or three, four squads. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I can get in. I already applied for my ATT, so <laughs> I'm ready to go if I get the if I get the go ahead even on Saturday. Um, nice. Oh, Adriel's here. Um, howdy. Hello, howdy. Howdy. Uh, so, yeah, so hopefully I can get into that match because I would love to shoot that one as well. That would be this weekend. Uh, I just made some ammo just in case. And uh, really, that's it for me. How about you, Kyle? Not a lot of really anything. Did a little bit of cleanup in my gun room, a.k.a. basement. And, yeah. Still waiting on wood for the range. And like I was saying last week, I want to do a redo the intro for the asylum, and I'm having troubles figuring out exa how exactly I want to do it. I know what I want in my mind, but having a trouble actually putting it out there because it sounds stupid in my head. So, <laughs> <laughs> does it sound stupid to everyone else, though? That's that's the question. So, run up, I'll get that out Adriel soon. Says, I'll just bite enough? the bullet and. Get it out. <laughs> nice. But uh, done is better than Angel's not done. done. Hmm? Done is better than not done. What is it? Perfection is the enemy of progress. Yep. Oh. Like uh, look yeah, at him. Eventually, yeah. you have to hit a point where you're just like, you know what? It's good enough. Pedro mm -hmm. shows yeah. up with the wisdom, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Lots sure. of fresh air Lays in the woods. It comes, comes, in, comes, comes, comes down jump. from his tree stand with his beard. Yeah. He's grown his beard yeah. and his wisdom. Descends from his tree stand yeah. to rain that wisdom down See, upon our listeners. He wants, us, he wants us to think he was hunting up there, but really that was his meditation and just uh, reabsorbing yeah. all his wisdom. Pontificating. Uh, pontificating. <laughs> yeah. On high. Yeah. And other big words. <laughs> Big yeah. Words. yeah. Hey, Adriel, what are you up to hey. with guns? Up in your oh. tree. Where are you? Uh, I'm at my parents' place. I oh. am. Uh, I am hunting deer, and uh, yeah, got one a little bit earlier, a couple days ago. Got a got a doe out of a tree stand. Haven't seen much. I've um, I've got a couple of spots where I've got like I don't know, 600 yards of just like open fields to watch, and usually that's pretty good. Usually there's there's some deer that show up there, <clears throat> but not this year they're not 
anywhere close. They're sticking in the bush for some reason, hmm. even after it snowed here. Hmm. So uh, how did you get the yeah. deer down from the tree stand? Or do you mean that you were in the tree stand and you shot a deer <laughs> from the tree stand and it was on the ground? You shoot them, they fall out anyways. They yeah. can't hang so on. Yeah. Like, like, like so, uh, wondered if your Alberta deer were like up in trees and stuff, like super deer. They're, they're climbing deer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just to interject, you're saying you're not seeing much. And I got a text just before I got home there today. And my wife sent me a picture. Look at this buck as it's running across the front field, a nice big buck, white tail buck at that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I had to ask her, well, why didn't you shoot him? Like, I have a tag. <laughs> Heck, I have the doe tag for the doe that was with that buck. <laughs> Packaged it. Yeah. So she had yeah. one job and she failed you. Ah, it's all right. Yep. We still got till pretty much Christmas for her muley doe. And yeah. Trying oh, to yeah, you guys, soon. that's right. You guys have mule deer out there. We go. Oh, yeah. Especially farmer's fields. Lots of mule deer. Hmm. I haven't seen, I haven't seen one yet this year. Usually they're all over the place. They're put, pushing out the whitetail. This year, haven't seen a single one. Yeah. Saw a bull Close. moose. I'm, 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 bull. I'm looking for my uh, antelus moose, and I found a bull. And uh, <laughs> I got real close up to him, about uh, 50, 50 meters or so. Wow. And he didn't seem to mind. I was just like, ah. Oh. It's because he's a moose. Yeah. He's like, you know what? Screw you. I'm I moose. had I had an antlered. Uh, tag two years ago for moose and I didn't see one in this year. That's all I got. Yeah. It's just that guy. Yeah, that's that's the way it goes. That is, uh, tends to be the way it happens. Yeah, I've been trying a couple different things this year. So I've been running the bino harness. Usually I don't bring binoculars. I just use my eyes, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is enough. But um, yeah, it was handy. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to do this next year. Maybe some of the time. Maybe if I'm taking my kid out or something like that. But everything I've been I've been seeing has been like real close up, 25, 50 meters. So uh, you don't really need binos for that. Um, I hope not. <laughs> no, I have been uh, using this uh, this new fangled sling, uh, which has got these uh, kind of braces that sit on the back there. And what that does is allow you to carry it um, kind of hanging up like this. So nice. it, uh, so you throw that over your head, and you can just you can pop the rifle up and, and take aim anytime mm-hmm. you want to. Kind of interesting. Sling. I had a yeah. sling like that on my AR-15 for a while, where it would put the it put the the sling at the top of the rifle, and it was it was pretty awesome. I liked it, and you just drop it, and it just hangs on your chest. Yeah, and it just sits just sits across, uh, yeah. which is interesting. I don't know if I if I'd recommend it because it's not as comfortable as to to carry as just a regular sling. It's bulkier. There's more like plastic things on it that can like hit the barrel and make noise and that kind of a thing. Mm. I'd rather have something that had just all fabric and no sliders and that kind of thing on them. So that was interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, just a savage axis, and it's uh, it's been fine. I with the sticker I really still like on the, it. With the sticker still on it, yeah. So you can just <laughs> sell it when you're done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I like the uh, the safety on them is uh, is nice and quiet. There's a, like, especially with this year where everything seems to be close up and I can't really get anything that far. You really got to be able to, to move that sa- safety quietly. And it's very doable on these things. I love that sort of a safety right up there. You just slide. Tanks, uh, tank safety. Yeah, tank safeties yeah. are awesome. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the crossbow ones. Crossbow ones suck. I hate those safeties. Yeah, agreed. Garbage. Agreed. Uh, not as much as I hate the REM 700 style safety where it's up on the side and it's like super clicky and I don't um, like those. They got to be soft. They got to be quiet. Yeah. 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 I find I can move my REM 700 safety quietly if I grab it and slowly slide it forward. But what I generally yeah. do is if I'm wandering around with it, I just leave the bolt handle up a little bit if I need the safety because, yeah, I don't want to, you know, pop up and go click because, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the way it'll go. Um, and I think so. I, I've been running. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of brain dump some of the things that are on my mind, uh, mostly to do with like winter clothing or winter gear for hunting. Uh, I've been wearing these muck boots. They're they're like they're very warm. They're basically like an insulated rubber boot. Um, really nice for like you get blood all over them. Just spray them off. They're fine. You're not you're not getting the inside of them wet or anything like that. But 
you can't hike in the things because if you hike anywhere and you're wearing warm clothes, your feet start sweating and your and then the inside of the boot gets wet and it does not breathe. It it yep. see, it's mm-hmm. it's not sealed, but it's basically sealed, and your feet will get sweaty and wet. And uh, one thing I don't really like about them, I don't know if, if there's a if there's another alternative out there that would wouldn't do that, but well, they're. Mm-hmm. I would have a suggestion on that. It's the same thing with what people would use for the ins- insulated. Uh, rubber boots is uh, a Bama sock. It's literally Bama sock, and it just goes over and it soaks up all that sweat, but retains the uh, thermal capabilities. Mm. I, I use the same boots as what you're describing, like the winter mucks. Yep. But then, then it's really cold out. Like normally, I'll just put muck socks on, or if it's actually fairly cold out, what I'll do is I'll actually I have uh, a down suit from scuba diving. For cold water scuba diving with my dry suit and i'll take the little booties from that put those on and i can hunt in whatever weather with those without the uh weight of my minus 100 baffins mm-hmm. yeah like, like a, you're saying I, I about hiking, like a, like i'll hike in those all the all the time i'll, I'll do like a merino wool or like a, a, a wool sock or something like that to help you know move the the humidity away but it's like yeah, they're so hot like they're and they're that's just the regular winter uh muck they've got like an arctic mm-hmm. pro that is like ungodly oh. hot that thing's just like un- yeah. unless it's like minus 20 it's unusable it's yeah. and there's no way to there's no way to like vent them or, or turn them like uh, um a little bit earlier in the week because i've been hunting here uh, uh all week a little bit earlier i had rolled the rims down because there was no snow out and that, that was fine that that got rid of a lot of the heat out of the out of the boots but now that there's like a foot of snow out there I, I need the <laughs> I need the height <laughs> and uh, yeah I gotta just gotta do it and it's the similar similar thing I got these like really nice warm uh, gloves uh, but they're too warm they're they're too mm. warm unless it's like mm. minus fifteen or colder they're just too warm <laughs> so I've just ended up going without them most of the time I've been wearing when it's cool I've got a little pair of like super super thin uh, thermal gloves mm-hmm. and they're enough that if it's cold I wear them inside my normal gloves and then when I get when I get where I'm going and I'm sitting I'll put my normal gloves on but if I'm hiking around or I'm handling handling a gun I, I have the little mm-hmm. the little thin ones on and they're just enough to keep the wind off your hands and you stay pretty warm with them yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah and then I, I ran the the red uh, snowsuit the the wearable sleeping bag for a bit Super convenient, man. I really like the idea because, uh, well, you, you guys know if, if you if you go hunting, uh, it's a whole rigmarole. In the okay, let's, let's get dressed. Let's do our base layers, our mid layers, maybe like one or two on top, and let's do like the sweater and the upper layer. Or you throw on a base layer and you chuck on a snowsuit. <laughs> it's way faster to get undone at the end of the day or get done up in the in the morning and. Because it's got zippers all over the place, it's pretty quick to uh, to vent heat out of it too, and you don't end mm. up like like with, with a cold spot on your back where the shirt mm. and the pants don't overlap or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can get you like you just stuff your shirt in your pants or whatever, and, and you're good to yeah. go otherwise. But uh, but boy, it is yeah. shirt sure very convenient. And I don't know, deer <laughs> deer don't seem to be that concerned with camo because I shot that I shot that doe in that red snowsuit, and it seemed to be fine. Didn't care. That's freaking humiliating. Doe's gonna get to heaven. What happened to you? I don't know. I got shot by some kid in a snowsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was out, thought he was out tobogganing or something. <laughs> Pulls out a rifle yeah. and shoots me. Well, the type yeah. of suit that you're talking about, I could definitely see that for the tree stand for sure. Yeah. Tree really stand nice or, or just stand sit. hunting, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I always yeah. find as, as soon as I stop moving, I get I have fairly low blood pressure anyway but as soon as i stop moving i just i if it's cold i just freeze i'm fine when i'm moving as long as i keep moving but as soon as i stop i'm cold as hell so yeah last Power couple of years i went out i took i took a blanket with me and i just wrapped the blanket around me and tucked myself all in and got me like like a deer, like a ground blind basically hmm. i like it so, uh <laughs> that's that's one other thing i've done this differently this year i used a bunch of pop-up blinds so i set up some different pop-up blinds where i thought would be good and they've, they've been fantastic we've um, I'm out uh, hunting with some family, and uh, and we've shot deer out of both of the both of those pop up blinds as well. One of them, nice. uh, they got like these shoot through windows, like these mesh windows. One of my buddies shot through it with a braked seven uh, mm 
uh, Remington Magnum and <laughs> <laughs> shredded the window pretty good. Well, whatever. That's you know who cares. It's, uh, it's just a just a window. Did he right? get Did he get the deer? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh man, who cares then? Whatever. Yeah. Um, he was using so Burger's got a, a hunting bullet and it's it's got a super thin jacket on it and it it just fragments when it goes in. They, they use it as like marketing for 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 the bullet itself, the hybrid uh, hunter. Saying, oh yeah, on impact, it's gonna lose like 40 to 70 percent of the weight of the bullet. And it just dumps the energy inside. So I don't know if it would be a great idea to use something Does like it that on penetrate, uh, Isn't that like the opposite? Normally we're looking to retain our weight in a projectile uh, on an uh, animal. Uh, <laughs> now, uh 168 grain in a 7 mm rim mag, uh, that's a ton of energy, anyways. And it's yeah. it looks it looks like a shotgun going off inside the deer. It just total devastation wow Jeez. but deer don't go very far after you have to get hit by that so oh, I guess that's good. yeah but... did it did it spoil a lot of meat or oh yeah oh yeah it's spoiled no. a lot of meat. <laughs> sounds like something that's you what i'm thinking like with. jacket just exploding in that no i don't want to deal with that when i'm cleaning up the deer and butchering the meat like i don't know lead everywhere and uh and jacket and whatnot very reliable yeah. for taking down the deer though Oh, my, no doubt it's effective but. yeah yeah my six five uh I, i'm running like 140 uh seiko seiko rounds 140 grain uh seiko rounds and they like through and through lots of damage busted ribs whatever but like i don't know I, all, all these car all, all the popular hunting cartridges <clears> work for deer <throat> like a lot of people talk about like i like this one or like that one it's like <clears throat> they all do it yeah. They all do the trick at, 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 at typical for, ranges. Yeah. So I go ahead. For like 150 years or more, shot them with a round lead ball and it worked just fine. Or, you know, a lead 33 bullet that you poured at home. Yeah. Yep. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. They I don't all think we work. need to get too fancy. No, they all work. And then one of the other things I wanted to mention is just like the, the time in to hunt. Like, I, I average most years. I need about twelve hours of hunting before I like I get a deer. Same thing this year. <laughs> Got to put in time, unless you've got like a really decent spot where there's they're just like all over the place, or you're in some um, uh, like acreage where they're practically pets. Uh, like you got to you got to put some time into uh, to hunt before you before you get them. They're not just a yeah. one one day can and see it and kind of get it kind of a thing, right? One of my buddies I was talking to this year, he sent me a photo <clears throat> of this big ass moose they shot. They shot a big bull moose and actually this happened to two of my friends this year. They drove in and a moose walked out in front of them on their way in. So they hopped out of the truck and shot the moose. Said nice. one of their guys had just gotten into his tree stand. He said he was there for about two minutes and they raided him and said, yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah. See, I can't complain on that because... The last two moose I got, it was the first night out. Got them this year. Like I put a couple weeks in trying and they, they were right there, but couldn't get a shot off them. So I can't complain, mm. but still it's crap. <laughs> yeah. This is why I think they should allow claymores for hunting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and, and the more time you put in preseason, the, the better, better odds you're going to yeah. have, right? If you've yeah. scouted it, if you put your cameras, you know where they're at. Like, I've, I, I had some cameras out. I didn't really have much on them. So uh, that didn't really help a lot because I didn't know what I should do about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was interesting. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird this year because usually, like almost always, there's a pile of muley deers uh, in, in this one, a couple of different spots. Haven't seen hiding or hair of them. And uh, yeah, the, the white tails have been avoiding the fields as well. Do you guys need to buy a separate tag for white tail and, and mule, or is it one deer yeah. tag? Or how's that work? No, yeah. well, they're separate. You'll you'll get <laughs> generally like a white tail. You can even just get a general, which is a, a antler antlered or antlerless antler antered antler antlered antlered, antlered, yeah. <laughs> antler challenged. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> Um, and then you can get supplementals in areas where they're looking to take, take their numbers down. So then mm -hmm. you can, you can get those in those areas, uh, with mealies, it's all by draw. So, uh, no, oh, no. there, no, there might, there might be some areas where there's the yeah. generals. Yeah. So with the mealies, like, yeah, you can get your general, which is your antlered and there's a zone, like I'm in 357, two zones South of me 
is a general mule deer zone. So I got, and this is, this is going to blow Adriel's mind right here, because typically if you get a draw for that species, you can't get the general tag. So right now I got my white tail general, my supplemental doe, my muley doe draw, <coughs> but mule deer is different in Alberta. I have a general mule deer tag as well. So, For certain areas, yep. Nope. Well, it's, it's a general tag, but I can only hunt in certain areas with that tag. Yeah. Yeah. So with a general just tag, wherever there's can, a general season, you can just shoot whatever you want. So providing I'm not in an area that that ta- that the antlered mule deer is a draw. Gotcha. Oh, that's right? interesting. Ontario, it's that always where... antlerless is a draw, and there's no you. Your general is just a buck tag. Most of Alberta mule deer, as a general rule, there are a few zones, but as a general rule, mule deer is a draw. Moose mm-hmm. is a draw unless you're shooting archery. If Unless you do it in archery season, mule, okay. moose is a draw. Uh, antlerless elk is a draw. Certain zones like uh, I think uh, there's some, Wainwright. There's some or... general elk as well. There, there's a couple places you can go to get a general. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they have that many elk out there, right? Well, if if you go out to like the mountains or in the middle of nowhere, the, yeah. like that, no. that's that's where no. yeah, go go do whatever you want. No one's no thing, one's right? there anyway, probably. Yeah, yeah, more more elk or, or moose than people in some of those areas. Yeah, you know, one thing that was interesting uh, this year: there's no mandatory CWD submissions in my area. So it had been mandatory mm. for a while, and it is no longer mandatory. So I, I bet what's probably happened is that they, mm. they were, like, really aggressive with testing as soon as they started, started coming into the province. They gave a nice wide buffer zone to try, kind of track it and see if that uh, disease was making inwards. And uh, they've scaled it back because it hasn't been mm. moving as fast as they maybe okay. expected it to move. That's see, it good. sounds like they shifted it then because there was other zones that haven't been CWD that are now CWD. Mandatory head submission. Yeah, yeah, the the far, like the east end of the province is all um, white tail uh, head submission. And then for some odd reason, the south and like this corridor going up towards, uh, like from cent- the center, center of Alberta, this corridor going upwards is a uh, uh, mule deer mandatory head submission. Mm. Oddest thing. But yeah. my dear, my area doesn't need it anymore. I take that to mean that uh, they just haven't been getting any positive cases. Because if they had any, po- like I, I would, I would assume that they're going to err on the side of caution with that. Mm-hmm. Which means, yeah, that would make I got, sense. I got, I got to eat deer after I shot it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we did some. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, kind of a point, yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Adriel. Sorry. Oh yeah, so uh, we did some tenderloin. Uh, burritos uh, this morning. Nice. Mm. A little bit of rice, tenderloin, some like, yeah, yeah, celery or some other weird stuff in those burritos. So I got a question on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when you have to do the head submission, I've never had to deal with that. I understand, okay, you can't eat the meat or you're not supposed to eat the meat. It's not a good Mm -hmm. idea to eat the meat until you Mm -hmm. get your results back. What about like the organs, like uh, heart? Is that included in that? Uh, I don't know. Um, the the ammo that we would follow is we'd process, like we we chop them up and make some sausage or jerky, bag it, freezer, wait wait for the head results. You take your head, um, mm-hmm. you put it in a grocery bag with your tag, and you go to like your local gas station. You have a freezer outside. You stick this head inside this freezer with a bunch of other heads <laughs> and uh, <laughs> fill up this little slip of paper that with your email address and whatever. And once it's done testing, they email you. Huh. Okay. Cause yeah, like, like I, movie. if it's intact, the first thing I eat is the heart. I'll eat it that, that night or the night before. I'm not a liver person, but the heart, I, I love that heart. Yeah, I'd never had deer heart, and then a couple of years ago, I was hunting with my brother-in-law, Dean. We nailed the deer. Somebody else got it. We got the heart, though. And uh, we had that that night, peppers, onions, some garlic, salt and pepper. That was the best meal I have ever had in my entire life. That was mm-hmm. that was amazing. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, so good. Yeah. I got the uh, I got the first deer out of the 
uh, the other family members here that are that are hunting. Uh, so I made some jerky and uh, like snack sticks, mm-hmm. like sausage, like little mm-hmm. sausage kind of a thing. So yeah, they came they came out really well. I really like the. Um, I had this real redneck solution before an old metal fridge with like a, a propane barbecue uh, heater at the bottom. Fantastic for like all the space you could possibly want. And that thing would chug and like, just like get it. All, like you put a full deer in there. No problem. <laughs> uh, but nice. um, no automation on it. No like temperature mm. control, no time control, no smoke control, just like it's all manual. So you got to yeah. figure it out yourself. And uh, this year, I ran a six rack and a four rack Bradley uh, oh, yeah. smoker and those two fit a full deer in them <clears throat> and uh, way easier. You just put the time in two hours, go outside. Ah, I guess it was three hours, whatever you go in, check your meat, pull some stuff out, start them up again, walk away. It was, it was That's so nice. easy to get like much, much more consistent results with them, even though they're, they don't fit a full deer in just one of them. <laughs> 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 but the racks like there were the racks are easier to get in and yeah they're i would say they're worth it definitely worth it for that kind of thing nice and better than your old fridge <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 definitely less work than the old fridge plus you don't need a banjo when you're uh when you're curing things <laughs> so that saves time and money uh, I like the banjo stuff. Or jug. Yeah. <laughs> jug. <laughs> what else do I have on my show? I, I can't can't have my show notes up at the same time as I'm, I'm on the Is there anything else on my show notes I'm forgetting? Uh, your uh, truck hunter. Oh, fucking truck hunters. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> so, like, either everyone truck hunts or no one truck hunts. It's illegal. You, you, can, you can't fire outside your truck in most, like, as far as I know. You can't, you can't shoot a deer outside your truck, right? But so many people, like I'm on, I'm on private line right now. So many truck hunters come down this private road to take a look at a field that they can't shoot in. There's no hunting. There's no trespassing on the on these fields, and uh, and they come they come down and take a look anyways. And it's so annoying to be in a tree stand and being like, God damn it, another one, another one. And it, it, the same thing happened um, uh, last weekend when I was on public land just all truck hunters all the time just mm-hmm. coming in and going out and it's yeah it's it's yeah. It's, a, it's annoying and it and the, the, like uh i don't want any more enforcement on it i just want more like social pressure like go go do some real hunting go sit in a stand put in your 12 hours get your deer then because like it, it is a lot easier just to drive around and you know poke 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 find a find a spot and find a deer and shoot it out, out the side of your truck on the on the side of your mirror but at the same time it's not really sporting for the deer and you, what you're potentially doing is like ruining someone else's hunt who is sitting there watching that deer waiting for it to come closer or some other thing right so it seems to me that someone in this someone in this debate is hunting smarter and someone's sitting in a tree <laughs> someone's freezing their ass off someone's warming their truck you just go save your heated <laughs> seats. You just lean out the window, pop the deer. Well, here, here, you can't shoot a deer from you it. Drive up to it. Yeah, you have to be yeah. out. And I think you're and supposed will, to be a certain amount of, of space away from the road as well. Which I don't. Whatever. If you're standing, I'll outside. break it down a little bit further. There's the good truck hunters and bad truck hunters. I, me personally, I dislike truck hunting. I am guilty of a version of truck hunting, <laughs> not shooting it from the seat pointing out the window, but I am guilty of doing the driving around, looking for a deer around crown land, Mm -hmm. not looking, slowing down, looking at land that, well, I can't do anything about it anyways, because I don't have permission there. But on the same token, you have a lot less chances. Like people think, Oh, you're covering more ground. Well, I can say from experience doing a fair bit of road hunting, we'll call it. And, Sitting in a stand, or actually the most success I've had is going for a walk. I haven't had much success sitting in a stand. I haven't had much success driving. Yes, I've seen animals. Guess what? You jump out of your truck to go get that animal, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> like, most of my success has come from just going for a walk. And pick an area and go for a walk. But I find I, I bump them a lot. A lot of times when I'm walking, you'd be like, oh, there's some tails like going through the bush. And it's like, ah, I don't get that one. 
I've, I've got a couple though. I've got a, more than a couple where um, I've been walking and they're just this like Goldilocks zone of like 80 yards away. And I just like come around a corner or something like that far enough that they couldn't hear me moving up. Um, but not so far that can't take the shot anyways, because if you're yeah. walking, you're, you're going to deal with like a compromised shooting position, maybe kneeling at best kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've bumped my fair share too. And moments where, you know, you're walking in to a cut and it's like, all of a sudden you see the flags waving. Yeah, why wasn't I more attentive walking in here? I knew better than that. And most strong. times than that, it more times than not, it's like, yeah, no, I I knew better than I would just let my guard down or whatever. It's hard to stay alert when you're walking through the woods too for a long period of time because you can't yeah. you can't stay on edge. You can't have your rifle up mm-hmm. while you're walking for yeah. two hours or whatever. Well, so exactly, and you're creeping along. Exactly. Like, I used yeah. to be really anal on noise, and then realized i'm just now in the anal on artificial noise not natural noise okay fine whatever yeah you're gonna put animals on alert but on the same token it's a natural noise so you know what my brother-in-law i'm like sneaking through the woods like a freaking ninja and my brother-in-law is walking <laughs> through the woods just snapping tree branches as he goes and having a, sm- having a smoke doesn't give a damn and oh he shoots a deer and i'm like what did he-? <laughs> like he just doesn't care i don't know if the deer are just like Ah, whatever. I mean, dude's out here having a smoke. I'm fine. Bang. Uh, I bet you the wind was working in his favor that day. Yeah. But he's yeah. been doing it for years. Years and years and years. And it how, many, how many deer gave him the slip because they smelled that, that cigarette downwind it, it compared could to what mm-hmm. he see? Yeah, yeah. It could yeah. be. The ones yeah. you don't know about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, so it's, yeah, it's been a good time. I'm still looking for my... Uh, my moose and uh my boy's out here last weekend and he's probably going to be here the weekend coming up so we'll see if we can get him a deer too nice. one of the one of the stands is in a fantastic spot it's like at this crossroads this t intersection of deer trails and uh and you got good visibility every which way and i've that ground blind there oh it's it's so good and uh i've been trying i've been trying thinking about how to do that in the years past i've set up like uh, tree stands like a little bit further away, but they didn't get good visibility. And the ground blinds, like you set up that sh- that mesh, and you and you just shoot through the mesh, and nothing can see you inside. There's black behind you; they can't see you. They can walk right up, and they're not going to. And it didn't even take them that long to like uh, get used to them. So I put them out, and like two days later, there's like tracks next to them. So <laughs> they uh, it didn't bother them for for too long. I would say if you're if you're just gonna pop out for a weekend, it might be I don't know maybe maybe it, maybe it would be fine, but uh, yeah, they're they're walking up to him pretty pretty quick. Nice, nice. It's nice. It's, it's so nice to be able to set up like little like little vision uh, spots. Like oh, I, 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 I can see here. I need something wide and thin. Like having the ability to like sw- swap those around on some of those different blinds is really nice. The ones with like the little sliders on the windows, so you can mm. make like a, a, a horizontal slit, or even like the the triangular ones that you just like flip up a little bit. They're all like super. It's you can make like the perfect uh, uh, what you can see and what you don't want, don't want to see uh, with those things very easily. Well, they got those ones now that they're 360 view. Like, it may not be your shooting window, but you can see through the wall. Mm-hmm. I like I like having a really dark backer because yeah. then, like, if uh, I, I saw it, like, walked up to one, and I'm like, oh, I was like, go out for a walk, and 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 one of my uh, family members was was in another one. I didn't, I couldn't see him, couldn't see him like walking, and they had an orange toucan. Like, I still couldn't see him in that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Anyways, yeah, that's cool. fun. Make some, make some jerky, make some sausage. I'm gonna have to go help. Uh, uh, there, we, there's another deer that was got tonight, so nice. I'll have to go skin that thing. Nice. They, they, they probably already got it done. I probably, I'm probably you don't need to do anything tonight. You're, you're, you're gonna be just like a blister. Time. You're gonna show up when it's done. Nice <laughs> with with my with my clean knife. All right, guys. We're all oh, oh. <laughs> darn. <laughs> Well, that's when you just bring well, beer. The next one. Well, yeah, you got to have the cooler there. At least you bring beer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. everybody's happy to see you. 
it is it is nice to to skin and gut a deer with like a couple of other guys who like know what they're doing too because mm-hmm. it is so fast it's just yeah. if you're just one person you got to pick away at it and pull and cut and saw and blah 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 blah, blah. if you've got a bunch of guys who or even just a couple of guys who, who know what they're doing it's so quick hmm. yeah. yeah i think that's yeah, all well, i had think- one of the guys at work, younger fella, Jordan, he shot his first deer, actually shoot, shot two this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had three guys with him. And he said, yeah, they had a guy with a setup in his shed and they decided to to process it themselves. It's, it's no problem. As long as you got lots of people, it's pretty easy. Hmm. Yeah, we process ourselves. I've been having grinding and uh, going off going off recipe, throwing like a little bit of uh, habanero peppers in some of them and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Nice. nice. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's all I have on my list, right? It yeah. is. All right. All that's left is Dave. Ha, for once, I'm not the one who doesn't have the show notes open. <laughs> 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 that's a first. Yeah. Uh, what have I done? I sold uh, a couple of my pistols. Finally, I sold my Luger, which was hilarious. It's a 1918 Luger in it's rebarreled and reblued and it's in really good shape. So I put it, put it up on gun nuts and I'm getting all these offers from people and I put it up for 1600 bucks and I figured, Oh, I'll get like 15. I'll be happy with that. I only paid a thousand bucks for it back in the day. Nice. And I'm getting guys going like, uh, you only take 700 bucks. Like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not willing to take a thousand dollars under what I'm asking. Thanks. Yeah. One guy said, well, maybe you were desperate. I'm like, <laughs> maybe you're desperate. <laughs> How desperate do I have to be to sell it for like, not even half. Come on, dude, screw off. So that wow. guy came back uh, back and offered me eight hundred. So, <laughs> yeah, just bought, bought that well, offer. he figured out you weren't desperate, so I took another desperate. hundred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he offered me, you know, nine hundred less than I was asking. So, I love those guys that gun. they offer like fifty percent of what you're asking. I lo- I love those guys. You know, like take it off your get hand. after it. You know, yeah, do you a favor. Yeah, I'll <laughs> I'll offer. I always offer people less unless I think it's a, a like. If I look at them, like you know what, that's a damn good price. Fine, I'll just pay you. But I'll usually look and say, yeah, you know, they're all around whatever eighteen hundred. I'll offer you seventeen hundred shipped or something. There's wheeling and dealing and negotiating, and then there's just plain insulting. I don't even think it's insulting. I just think it's stupid. Like. Yeah. But they that, like some some of those some people will say ah not that the lowest I'd be willing to go is this and that mm-hmm. number is lower than you might have thought so like the the yeah. whole idea with lowballing someone is for them to come back with a number that's still like quite a bit less than their asking price yeah that the being said that, is, the correct that thing that is, is how is I got that engage. yeah that is how I got that lower though so nice. I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, it, it well it, it I, I kind of did it had stoppages like it's not 100 percent reliable but it's also 102 years old 104 five years it's old a luger yeah it's a luger right so the guy had it up it had been listed for like months and months and months and i think because it wasn't 100 percent reliable and the guy was honest about it it just didn't get any offers hmm. right so i ended up offering the guy like I don't know, 15% less than he was asking. He said, you know what? Screw it. It's been up forever. And he gave it to me, which is a great price. And then I just held on to it forever. So, mm. yeah. so sold that, mm. sold my Ruger Mark III 22. So I may buy a Mark IV. We'll see. Um, I did buy Rangeview Sports had, I'll post it in the chat for people because they still have a couple left. Uh, they only have them left in bronze, but they're selling the Ruger Wrangler 22 long rifle single action revolvers with like a four and a half inch barrel for 260 bucks, no taxes, free shipping. Ooh, no taxes. So they're norm- yeah, they're normally 350 Good price. How much they're- did you pay for yours, Adriel? <laughs> 239 yeah. but with taxes and with, with tax, shipping. Yeah. 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 Right. And I want to, yeah, I need it. I want to get a single. Yeah. yeah. And I want to get a single action revolver anyway. And I just, a 22 is fine. I want to, I want to have it just so I have one. And when I'm teaching people, I can, I can bring it out and say, yeah, no boy gun you yeah. can shoot. And, you know, here's they're cool. We don't use them anymore because they're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they're ridiculous. But I kind of want to get you one, addicted. So. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. And here's a semi automatic. This is guns that we use now in our modern world because it's not 1863. 
but I kind of want one. And the only ones they had left were bronze Cerakote, which is probably why they didn't sell those ones yet. Because I like the bronze. Oh, that would, I like the bronze too. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of like it. So I'm like, you know what? I don't care. If it was bright pink, I'd still buy it for that price. So whatever. Nice. So I bought one of those. That bright purple. So wanna... <sighs> the Richard Baskin <sighs> Witch Mark IV. I have one. It's great. Excellent. That's good to know, Richard. I'm happy about that. Although for the price, if it's not great, then eh, eh, I didn't pay much for it. I'm okay with that. Uh, Mark IV, I haven't really looked at it too much yet, but yeah, the 2245 uh, was the one I was looking at because I like the, I like that grip angle. And I did discover with the Ruger Mark III's, disassembling them, I never took mine apart. I've had it for like 12 years. I've never taken it apart. I just clean it as it is and it always ran because I looked at the disassembly instructions and once I stopped laughing at how ridiculously stupid it is, <laughs> I decided that I would I would run that gun until it broke and then I, I, would, I would disassemble it and clean it. And I, I didn't put that much ammo through it anyway because I didn't use it that much. I put a couple hundred rounds through it because I didn't really like it all that much. It's very accurate, but I just didn't like the gun. Um, but the I was at the range and uh, somebody brought a Mark IV out and it breaks apart like an AR-15. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm like, somebody took the time and designed this properly. You can actually mm -hmm. disassemble it without, you know, <laughs> hiring an engineer to reassemble it for you. <laughs> so, yeah, I really like those Mark IVs. They're super cool and super easy to field strip and clean. It's great design love it and the guys that i know that had them uh absolutely love them they just think yep. they're great guns they always hear good things yeah. uh mm. when hunting which i haven't done in a couple of years because you know covid and all that bullshit so uh went out with my brother-in-law and we went up north of algonquin park to some uh, crown land that's up there that's a forestry area so we had uh it's Beautiful area, and where we went, the roads are wide enough you can get normal vehicles in. So one of the guys brought up his uh, one of the guys brought up his RV. So we had an RV for the weekend, and a couple of us tented. A couple guys stayed in the RV and uh, campfires every night, and stars right. that you can actually see, which is gorgeous. And uh, didn't get anything for the first four days. We were bird hunting, so i I brought my uh, I brought my little Ruger ten twenty two, the gray birch that I built. Oh, which nice. I hadn't actually fired it, so I was hoping it would work. <laughs> so I, I said, hadn't fired it, hadn't zeroed it, hadn't done anything. So I zeroed it one day. I took my shotgun one day and then took took the gray birch out the next day because I'm not I'm not a shotgun guy. I don't I don't particularly like shotguns, so I, I'm much more confident with a rifle. So I missed a shot with a shotgun. I'm like, you know what? I'm bringing my 22. <laughs> Didn't see anything. And then we got the last day we're out there, we got into an area where it was, it was pretty flooded and pretty swampy. And we got, we were driving around. We were, we were truck hunting out of uh, at a little for a little side by sides. Cause the part, the birds come out onto the road. Right. So you just mm -hmm. drive around till you see a bird hop out, shoot it. and Good to go. That's why I like so, shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, the other guys were using shotguns, but this one let me get long shots that the other guys couldn't take, right? So we're, uh, we're, out, we're out doing this. We get to an area, and we get through this area, and we kind of get to a spot where we couldn't go any further. We got stuck. So we had to cut down a tree, cut down the tree, make a new path around this little swampy area, get back out to the road. The guys behind us come up, and they're like, hey, there was a partridge sitting there watching you the entire time. I'm like, <laughs> you are freaking kidding me and they're like no we're there for like 20 minutes and this partridge is just sort of sitting there mm, look at these idiots uh, <laughs> so i'm like you know what i'm going back so my brother-in-law drove me back in i walk through this swamp get to the other end and i'm walking up this uh, hydro cut and i'm looking in the ditch and this is nothing 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 and i'm like ah whatever that stupid bird's gone and i'm i go to turn around i look up and the bird's sitting right on the road walking the other way nice. <laughs> had no idea i was there so i just brought up the 1022 and put around right through his throat at 25 yards standing just dropped nice. him like a rock so i ran over broke his neck waited until he finished and walked back out and then like 10 minutes later we're driving up a road we're just driving really slow and i look over and there's a Freaking partridge, like right there. I heard him rustling in the leaves, so <clears> popped out, missed him with one shot because I was shooting through the woods, and just I nailed him with the next one with a body shot. Only ruined a tiny bit of meat because I got a brush shot. And uh, yeah, so I got two of them on the last day, and 
we nice. did, we got probably I don't know maybe fifteen of them or something like that over the week. So we we had a big fry pan fried them and mm-hmm. made home, homemade French fries and beer and uh, coleslaw. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Nice. So it was a hell of a good hunting trip. I loved it. So because of that, I'm gonna figure out where I can hunt bird and small game around here and start doing that because I had kind of forgotten how much i enjoyed hunting because it's been such a long time since i've done it so well, yeah, grouse I'm, is so good too like it's such, yeah. a, such a good meat yeah way these guys are partridges but yeah grouse same deal but and cleaning them is ridiculously easy i never realized mm-hmm. how easy it was to clean birds when i got a little tutorial and i'm like pff, like two minutes and done like that's amazing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. So I really, uh, I really enjoyed that. And actually getting to eat what I shot later that night was like, yep, that was fantastic. So happy about that. And that is what I did in guns. Did I, did I tell my story last week about hand catching that grouse? (laughs) I I don't know. I I didn't hear it. I don't recall. I know. I don't Uh, remember that. So so was that with, uh, with, with one of our listeners, uh, hunting, uh, grouse and deer and that kind of thing and we uh, so we got a couple of grouse I just brought like a, a, a 22 with a 10 round mag so we got a couple on that mag and then there was like three rounds left we had one um, winged it and then um, I gave the rifle to, to my buddy to, to go uh, shoot it and um, missed or, or, or just wounded it so I saw it like going and I saw a wing flap and I'm like, oh, it's wounded. I dumped all my gear. And I, <laughs> I chased it and I'm like, circle around on it. He's like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, just hang on. I, I got a thing. I got to do a thing. <laughs> and I, I ran I ran at it and uh, caught it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. It's like that. that uh, there's, a, there's a video on YouTube of a guy like throwing his like, bow. bow at a... At a uh, at a bird, and I, it's a yep. similar kind of a thing, but like I, I, I knew that it, it couldn't fly, uh, so I chased him down. Chased him down. <laughs> nice. You didn't, you didn't video. You weren't wearing a, a camera, were you? Oh, that would have been glorious. That would have yeah. been awesome. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Never yeah. wearing it. You never have a camera around when something cool mm-hmm. happens. It's too cold. Like, I, like there's there's all sorts of cool tech that uh, that would be really cool. Like, uh, I was um, I've got a spotting scope with a camera to like a phone attachment and all that kind of stuff for it uh so i was thinking about doing that this year uh um using that to like videotape deer as i shoot them kind of a thing it's too damn cold like my phone my phone is uh it's a samsung it doesn't like cold the like minus 10 if it stays no. out exposed in minus 10 for long enough it just dies yeah so that's, that's lithium ions lithium ion no mm. like cold so no. what well, I've seen people I've, do I've is take a couple of hand warmers and elastic band hand warmers to them. Oh, yeah. They don't get hot enough to damage it, but it'll keep mm. the battery keep the battery warm. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. I've had I've had some other phones that like that would work in the cold a little bit better. This this Samsung though, it just does, does not like it mm. gets to a certain temperature, the temperature sensor is like nope. And it just mm. oh, zero battery. Yeah. Just uh, saves that, itself or something like that. The whole breaking the neck. <laughs> Of the partridge. There's one time, I don't even know if it's appropriate for the show. It's disturbing when you think about it. Well, we only got six, we only got Perfect. six point viewers right now. Go for it. Yeah, Kelly, yeah. Kelly's not here anyway. So uh, yeah, when I caught so... that, when I caught that grouse, I ripped his head off. <laughs> we, didn't have any, we didn't have any ammo. <laughs> did you like right. scream when you did it? Ah! Like, paint your face with its yeah. blood. Yeah, the thing is, you and Intended on doing that, so I shot this gross with the shotgun. Me and my buddy, and okay, it's flapping on the ground. So grab it and go to break its neck. Well, just shot it with in the head with the shotgun, so it's extra flexible. And so I just cranking on the neck, and then just twisted his head right off. And I just oh. Okay, well, with, the, with the rough grouse in in and, Alberta, you can just you can just yeah. pull them off. It's humane. Yeah, Super yeah, it's humane. quick. It looks yeah. weird. If, if yeah. for someone who doesn't hunt or something like that, you're like they might yeah. think like, "Well, that's savage and weird." But it's like, yeah. oh, that's that's pretty humane. much my buddy says. Like, I thought you're breaking its neck, not ripping it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as easy. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah. Meanwhile, everybody who doesn't hunt, who isn't listening to the show anyway, if somebody accidentally wanders into the podcast when they're looking for somebody else, they're going to be going, oh my God, your people are monsters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The crossover between like shooters and hunters is, is, is a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people that, that do both. Yep. Yeah. And a lot mm-hmm. of people who do one, but not the other. I know a lot of competition shooters who are like, ew, hunting. Ugh. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of yeah. hunters who are like, competition shooting. Ew. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's all come together. <laughs> Jessica and, needs Jessica needs therapy. Sorry, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Nah, I'm not. We're, we're not sorry. We seek to educate yeah. and traumatize. So. <laughs> when, when you upload the show, don't tag Peter or anything like that. Because uh, absolutely tag Peter. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. Uh, all right. Upcoming events is sponsored by Telos Alpha. Telos Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the firearms vertical. They help with business processes, strategic planning websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, social media, and definitely PETA. Learn more at telosalpha.com. And we have no upcoming events listed in the show notes. Anybody have anything off the top cool. of their heads? Cool. cool. It's cold. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. is a winter night shoot happening in Peace River next weekend on the 20th. I'm not going probably because it's cold and we just got six inches of snow and I'm good. What's the temperature going to be like next weekend though? What if it's not? Uh, I haven't looked, but Steve did say it's supposed to be like the last one and the last one was like minus 20, minus 25. Yeah. Like, no. Come nah. on. No, I'm good. Well, At least you can no. say you were sticking to your guns. <laughs> I'd shoot minus 10, but like minus 20, minus yeah. 25, any bit, any wind, even, even in minus 15, any wind yeah. is just too much. Yeah. 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 I've been there. I'm all for the night shoot. Practice, but eh, it's not but fun. So if people are interested in going and I mean, if I were to do it, I'd run a plate carrier. And whatnot, but even still, I still don't like shooting with gloves on, and yeah, they just yeah. But if people are interested, that's happening in Peace River Saturday. So, and there's probably spots open because it's cold. Oh, so. there's <laughs> definitely spots open. Yeah, I like I like to wear like an oversized coat, like all my gear on, oversized coat on, super warm. Time to shoot yeah. the the stage. <laughs> Flip that thing off. Hit the button now. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah. Do the shooting. Get back. Put the coat and go back on. Yeah. Warm up. You ready? Again. Yeah, I'm ready. Stand by. <laughs> 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 like an action hero. Uh, yeah, if it's really cold, I usually wear um, I wear my my vest on the outside of everything. So I got all my stuff on. Let the vest all the way out, and then ratchet everything in so you're nice and toasty warm. Nice. Yeah. Keep the gloves on until it's right ready to shoot, and then wear my little thin glovies. And usually, my fingers are numb by the time I'm done. <laughs> but yeah. Do it, do it fast. Yeah. News. What do we got? News today. Ontario announces seventy-five million to combat illegal guns and gangs. Hmm. And reading it, it actually sounds like I don't know. I don't like when they say guns and gangs. How about you just go after the gangs, and then the gun problem sorts itself out? That's always kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like they're actually going after uh, criminal activity, enhancing investigations, and stopping the flow of guns across the border. <clears throat> That's so, Ontario specifically? Ontario yeah. specifically, yeah. Hmm. And they're establishing something called the Office, Office of Illicit Drug Intelligence to disrupt drugs coming into the province. And uh, they're going gonna after. Stop, they're going to stop drugs. Okay, got it. Yeah, the war on drugs is going well. So. I think I've heard drugs. This yeah, yeah. 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 Drug how's the war yeah. going? How's the war going? Is it almost so over? Far, drugs, so far, drugs are winning. <laughs> Last <laughs> That's <I> always <laughs> good. Considering they're now listed on the stock market, I think the drugs are ahead. <laughs> it took a while. Uh, they're also uh, going with uh, putting some money towards firearms analysis and tracing to fight gun smugglers. 
Again, that's probably not going to do much, but they will probably will bust some of the mules down in the States that are, uh, you know, bringing stuff across or straw purchasing they and smuggling it. stuff well, up. That's, so. the, that's the U.S. doing that. That's not Canadians doing that. And they did. There was a bust recently here where um, the U.S. Had, had busted some people trying to smuggle in uh, guns Good. from from the U.S. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Americans, for doing what we should be doing. That's great. Our our record of securing our border is is far from being the best, considering we just let people walk across. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're also going to create a mobile prosecution team that specializes in guns and gangs and beef up border security teams, border enforcement security teams. Now that's a federal thing, so I don't I don't know what the province has to do with that. I don't know how that works. Maybe they're working with the feds or something. I don't know. I don't know. If anybody knows, post it in the comments. But yeah. Anyway, they're not coming. Uh, they're not coming after. Uh, they're not coming after legal gun owners, from the sounds of it. So yeah. that's different. That's a nice change. Yeah. If there's no wording like gun bans, then I'll, I'll I'll take it. I'm happy with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm super happy. They're actually planning on going after the people that are causing the problem. I mean, that's kind of weird. It's like Bizarro Universe when I read about I know, that. Right? I'm like, I know. <laughs> what the hell happened? Maybe maybe a, a bit of a cynic, but I I can't see seventy million dollars. Was that the number? Seventy million? Seventy five. Seventy five. Which is I a drop. Can't see, in the I can't see that doing yeah. anything. Yeah. No. It's like the, the the problem is that <clears throat> like trying to stop gangs from from bringing guns in is uh, impossible. There's too much money that they're making from selling dr uh, illegal drugs. Mm -hmm. They can afford to pay mules to, to bring them over, unless unless they're going to up the. Uh, the number of vehicles that they stop coming into the country and sample more of them, there's just uh, the risk is far too low. But that's that's the legal borders, right? How about the yeah. illegal borders? Yeah, most of them they're yes. not going to be doing anything. About yeah, that. and there's going to be no uh, no stopping there. So no, to me they should just be going after the gangs because if you can actually put a dent in those bastards and really make their ROI suck then the the market for illegal guns just goes away because they're the only ones buying them. Do you want to know how to really get a, go after the gangs? Mm. Legalize hard drugs. Yeah. Gangs won't have any money, and yep. uh, we get to stop pretending this farce is, uh, is, is how things should be. Yep, I saw I saw a very funny uh, a very funny meme the other day, which I saw, and I'm like, that is absolutely correct. It said uh, it was a bit about the war on drugs, and then it said nobody is sh no, the convenience store owners on your block aren't shooting each other over who gets to put a convenience store where, and the computer stores aren't shooting each other, and the libraries aren't getting into gun battles. Nobody shoots each other except over illegal activities. So mm -hmm. it is. And I mean, I, I do see, and that's an interesting thing I see, like a lot of people more on the left seem to be in favor of just decriminalizing all drugs. And a lot of people I see on the right are like, you can't do that. It's immoral. It's illegal. It'll cause such a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would cause any more of a problem than we have already. And it would certainly save a ton of money. And I mean, I know people that have been arrested who you know, got arrested for possession of cocaine in one case. And they were just having a really crappy time in their life and they were self-medicating with cocaine. That was their drug of mm -hmm. choice. And so the government ended up costing them $25,000 in legal bills and put them in jail for a couple of years. And that didn't improve their crappy life at all. That made things no. <laughs> substantially worse and put them in a much worse position than they were in in the first place. Yeah, so, and I don't think someone's going to say, well, I was going to do heroin, but it's illegal. Uh, I was going to do cocaine, but it's illegal. Like, yeah. if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's legal or not. Le like, yeah. or and that's or that's the thing. Like, pot's legal. I don't smoke pot because I have no interest in smoking pot. Yeah. I have friends that do, but they never had problems getting it before. It was fine. And really, the only thing that I've, because I don't smoke pot either, but the only thing that that has done is opened it up for more therapeutic treatments like CBD oil and that making that more readily accessible. Yeah. And allowing research into it too. So you can figure out yeah. what this stuff does. Like the amount of yeah. research they have on a lot of illegal drugs, there's none. 
or very little because it's almost impossible or very, very expensive for even legitimate researchers to mm-hmm. get permits and security and all this crap to possess this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and there's this whole yeah. thing now with uh, like on the therapeutic side, like micro dosing with uh, LSD. Oh, MDMA, uh, L- LSD, not so much in Canada, but like ketamine, uh, MDMA, mushrooms. Uh, I've heard of the mushrooms. mushrooms. Psychosilvan. Yeah, I think there are some places. I think I was actually listening to a podcast. I think it might must be more like a resort type thing for the LSD because your high is for so long on LSD. Like there's this was a, a they were setting up clinics where you go and sit down there for a few hours and they had therapists and everybody there to to talk to while you're doing it. It's actually when you start looking into it, very intriguing. I heard some interesting stuff about uh, using it to treat uh, people that have psychosis and a lot of really serious mental issues. And uh, some of the research is showing, and some of the stuff they did in, in the 60s before it all became illegal, uh, it seems to indicate that people that have really, really serious mental issues can actually be helped quite a lot by LSD or other hallucinations. Or mushrooms. Yeah, yeah mushrooms. Know, that could help too. Yeah. yeah. And they're using it for addiction as well. Like, just need basically. to legalize it. Just need to legalize yeah. it. Yeah, and I don't see the downside. Well, they're I'm making really... progress because they're these clinics. They're actually allowing this research to happen, and there's clinics opening up for certain things. Like they're extenuating circumstances that you get approved for treatment, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's it's making progress. It's like weed before yeah. it was extenuating circumstances. Oh, you've got a car. Oh, my back. Oh, my back. Like glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah a few people that i know had uh had guards and that's like there's nothing wrong with you other than you like weed <laughs> that's not and, you, and and you want to be legit yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah oh my back oh oh my god <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i think you just made all this stuff legal or at least just stop charging people for possession because again you're not you're not improving anyone's life by arresting them if the guy's got like a trunk full of cocaine sure that's fine or but you know he, maybe not charge him if he turns in the guy that gave it to him because that's the guy you want anyway but if you legalize it then the gangs don't have anything if you decriminalize they still have something yeah. they can still sell yeah. it, right they'll still sell that's like true. whatever is cheap and 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 useful if it's legalized i don't know i don't know what, what it would do to costs like, would you would you do like nasty fentanyl, or would you do cocaine if they're like both readily available? Probably the cocaine, right? I like your corner store. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know, Seven yeah. Eleven, pick up a dime bag. I'll be honest. I think like okay, you use uh, marijuana as a prime example because that's something that has been legalized. It's sold in stores. I'm sure there's still a lot of people because those prices are probably a fair bit higher because you've got taxes and everything yes, in there. That there's still people buying off the street, not mm-hmm. going to the store sure. and paying the tax. Yeah. And I'm, for I know proven few... clean stuff, they don't care. It's the price, and oh, I can call up my bud and meet him at the corner. I know quite a few people who who do that, and sometimes it's just it's cheaper, and it is quite a bit cheaper. Sometimes the quality's better, or you know they've got their guy that they're used to, and exactly they don't have to wait for it to be shipped and a lot of people don't live in areas that have a store that's readily available or they can't get to it and some of the people just are like f the government they just don't trust them they'd rather buy it from some dude in a back alley than so government grand prairie in grand prairie weed stores are like liquor stores there's one on every block yeah We've got, my town has about 22,000 people in it, and I think we've got five or six of them right now. Like, it's insane. Hmm. So they just keep going out of business. But that's how it should be. Like, the way the Ontario government licensed it initially was ridiculous. They held, like, this stupid lottery, and people who who had nothing would just put their name in on the lottery and just see if they won. And then they'd try and they'd find some company that would like give them a million bucks or something to, to run the store for them in their name. And then they would (laughs) buy the store from them, you know, but this person had nothing to do with the store. They just had Hmm. the license and it should just be, if you're legalizing it, don't be ridiculous. Just say, that's fine. Go open a store wherever you want. I can't be within two kilometers of school, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Who cares? You're not selling yeah. to kids anyway. It's not like they yeah. won't walk by it on their way home a kilometer away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ridiculous. So you well, just say, like any other store, done. 
That's just Canada, though. Canada's stupid with, with a lot of that stuff. The province is like stupid. a state-run liquor store. Could you imagine? State-run mm-hmm. liquor stores? That sounds like some yeah. Soviet bullshit. Nope, that's Canada. Uh, Utah. <laughs> you know what? Utah. Utah has state-run liquor yeah. stores, too? Oh, that's yes. crazy. Wow. To, to buy actual alcohol, like a real 5% beer, you have to go to the state liquor store. When you go to Walmart and buy your beer, it's basically near beer. It's like three percent two three percent beer i made that mistake like oh look there's this i didn't think we could do this in utah got back to the hotel room american beer effing close to water like sex in a canoe (laughs) yeah but no yeah utah state-owned liquor stores only i was i was I was impressed when I was out in Alberta and I went to the hotel and I, I don't drink anyway very much, but once in a while I have a cooler, something with an umbrella in it, you know, manly stuff. So I went out <laughs> to, uh, I w- went to the hotel and I'm like, well, that's weird. What's it? That's like a convenience store, like just next to the hotel. Cause the hotel I was staying in was like, I don't know, in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, I'm like, what the hell? It's like a liquor store and it's open at like 11 at night. And you just wander in and I'm like, do you guys like, I was talking to the guy and he's like, yeah, no, we're just privately on blah, blah, blah. And like, it was so much cheaper. It was so cheap. Yeah. Mm, there it was are great. A few of those around. Yeah. Yeah. Good Usually selection. In the middle of nowhere. Prices were good. <laughs> I'm like, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. And then you come to Ontario and it's like freaking, yeah, it's like, you know, the Soviet Union running your store and, you know, you must. And then. Like I'm listening to some of the ads. We we had a problem. Well, not a problem, but it was a problem for the unions where the government a couple of years ago was talking about privatizing the LCBO, the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, and the unions lost their minds. And they ran these big campaigns about only the union can save, keep you safe from the evils of alcohol. <laughs> young people will be getting booze if we allow private industry to do this. And then the... The problem with that argument is that in Ontario, unless you're in a large town, your LCBO is actually run by your local convenience store. They have um, associate stores, which are yeah. just your local convenience store, and they have a booze section. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pointed out. And then the local convenience stores did a thing, and then they pointed out that statistically speaking, you're less likely to get a controlled substance from a private business than you are from a government-run store. <laughs> yeah, it's just a grift. <laughs> It's just oh, a, it's just a risk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I look at the prices of alcohol here, oh. and like it's, I don't even know what the tax is on booze in Ontario, but it's insane. Like it's huge. Well, it's, yeah. There, there's, there's some things that the market should control, and the sale of like consumer goods like beer and liquor and that kind of thing. Yeah. That should be market led. Government should government. be doing pretty much nothing. Deal with the border, make sure I have roads and hospitals and I mean maybe yeah. education. Military. Yeah. Yeah. Military. Deal yeah. with yeah. external threats. Yeah. Maybe yeah. education. Maybe I'm kind of on the kind of on the fence on that one. I don't know. They do a bad job of it. So they're just bad at everything. So they should do the <laughs> yeah. minimum amount and that way they'll be bad at less things. Yeah. Yeah, because they can focus be more attention to those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's their core. You know, do your like a business. If you're a business, you focus on your core services because when you start going out into stuff you're just not good at, or you try to do too much stuff, you fail and you suck at everything. Yeah, and government sucks at everything. It's like a superpower. Do less, suck less. Exactly. Yeah, but that is not the way our society is going. Sadly, people seem to want government to do everything badly rather than just doing a few things badly. So, including yeah. live their life. Yeah. It would be nice to be able to live our lives with minimal government no, no. interference. People want the government to live their life. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And there has to be a balance in there somewhere where, you know, yeah. they do the stuff they need and take care of people who yeah. really need it. And then the rest yeah. of us take care of people. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, what were, what were we talking about? I don't know. Government sucks. I don't know. We've covered a Beer, lot of them. drugs, something. drugs, <laughs> truck hunting, snapping. We're back. in the news, so um, yeah. yeah. I think you're gonna, <laughs> have, you're, gonna have, you're gonna have problems captioning this particular episode. Anyway. This is a, a this hot, be quite hot the caption, of topics. Yeah. <laughs> so another thing in the news, and this is just a new product. Um, this made me laugh. I saw Tim Krosno from the states, one of our uh, show friends posted it and i posted in the chat if you search for effed up old deer stands there's a company in the states mediator uh, i think it's mediator.com yeah mediator the mediator.com they have a hilarious thank you 
Good intern, good intern and gal. They have a hilarious, uh, hilarious uh, calendar, which uh, the guy, his first ever deer stand was made from an old 35 mile per hour stand that his dad stole or salvaged. So he got a kick out of crazy old deer stands when you wander, wander around. So they put a uh, thing up on the internet and said, send us your images of your effed up deer stands. And people did. And they made a calendar. Nice. Out of it. That is so cool. Nice. I like yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm tempted to buy them in Canada. Two of them comes out to 50 bucks with shipping. Hmm. So that's a pretty expensive calendar, but I'm thinking for your, uh, for your, uh, your hunting friends or anyone with a sense of humor, it's pretty hilarious. So yeah, go to the mediator, look up after up old deer stands calendar. It's awesome. Very nice. I'd pitch in on a shipment of those. I we'll talk. Too. We'll talk. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm thinking of ordering a couple for Christmas yeah. gifts. So. Yeah. And that. Is the news? Anybody else got anything? I think that was for, it hold for, your for news. All right, CCFR legal fund donations. Uh, Ipsic Ontario, well done, Ipsic shooters, has donated nine thousand six hundred and seventy-three dollars and fifty-three cents, which is there a weird, is not round number. Awesome. But yeah, bravo, Ipsic Ontario. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, there was nice. another piece of news in there that got deleted. Huh? Sorry, and it has to do with Ipsic. Oh, the about them becoming an official sport? Yeah. A, a world recognized. Yeah, well, yeah, I saw I that. Saw it, that was in there and it got deleted. Um basically Ipsic is now recognized uh what was it? The global Wor- uh, world um hold on, I'll find it. Basically on the same bar as any other recognized sport globally, because before huh? it was uh Observation status for the Olympics, and now it got accepted to this big organization. Yeah, I'm looking for Ipsic that. Olympics would be amazing. I would yeah. watch the shit out of Ipsic Olympics. Yeah, absolutely. Would make the Olympics interesting again. It is the. Come on, open up. Global Association of International Sports Federations. Yes. Full mem- full member status. Nice. Yeah. Huh. So that's post, another post step link in the forward. chat. Yeah, that's fantastic. Good. The more we can get recognized as these are actually legitimate sports and not like, you yeah. know, some weird fringe thing that only crazy people do. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, and like Adriel yeah. said, that's a, just another step to Ipsic in the Olympics. Oh, yeah. that would oh. Yeah, that would that be, would be awesome. I would watch it all, all day. I'd just sit there watching matches. Shooting yep. sports on the CDC? Ipsic multi-gun. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> be they'll find a way. They'll, they'll show something else. They'll show Is the CDC like still anything around? Else. They'll show it at 3 Apparently. o'clock in the morning when no one's watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd watch CDC. it. Yeah. Very cool. Sorry to cut in there. That just reminded me. That was, that was a good one. And it that got good one. removed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, so we did the CCFR, and uh, it is now more important than ever. Become a member, donate to the legal fund, so maybe we can get our AR-15s and assorted other things that aren't AR-15s, but are apparently now AR-15s, such as bolt-action rifles. Saw that uh, one. And yeah. shotguns. Pump shotguns. And shotguns. Yeah. yeah. And other stupid things. What was the? What was that one that just got prohibited? That was that Kodiak bolt action. Yeah, the Kodiak Kodiak K seven six hundred or something like that. Two hundred. Something, something like that. Might have been yeah. two hundred. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't seen that one, go look it up. It's it's declared not an AR fifteen by the RCMP, and it isn't because it doesn't take an AR fifteen upper or anything. It's a bolt and it's action a bolt rifle. Gun. Yeah, it's a bolt action rifle, but it's prohibited. Yeah, it's got a pistol grip. So my fear that the way this is going is it's going to be, we're going to get into that Australian type model where it's going to be, yeah. oh, it looks like an assault weapon. So if it, yeah. essentially if it has a pistol grip or it's black, you can't own it because uh-huh. it could be mistaken for an assault weapon, whatever that means. So yeah. my my fear is you're going to eventually run into that up here. And I could, when I saw that bolt at that particular one, I'm like, come on, guys, not an AR fit. It, it, I mean, that's not even vaguely an AR-15. They're getting yep. even further from what is an AR-15. You know, they're getting into it had a carry handle on it, or the marketing mentioned AR-15 style controls. Oh, AR-15. 
So. The, gun, the gun manufacturers just start putting puppies and, and ponies and stuff on the guns so that way Might they help. look like friendlier and not so dangerous. I don't know. Yeah. How do, does anyone know how you challenge? Can you challenge one of those classifications? Because it's just the RCMP saying, well, <laughs> it's it's prohibited. But can you actually like – how would you even challenge that to say this is bullshit? Well, is there question, a mechanism? I would have a follow-up question. Why would you want to? It's It's – an opinion. It's been stated in court as an opinion. Well, I'd it's say, an opinion. But if I'd I bring say one the question the is, how do we get the rest of the industry to treat it like an opinion and quit using the FRT? Yeah, hmm. that's true. But are you going to get approval to import that? Or if you put them up for sale, Canadian Tire isn't going to carry them because FRT says it's prohibited. That's the problem. So it is officially yeah. an opinion, but it's an opinion that carries yeah. the weight of law. If somebody catches yeah. you with that gun, are you going to get charged? That's Probably. what Alberta Tactical is trying to do right now with their court cases. Yeah. yeah trying good point. to get that reversed. And mm-hmm. it's not cheap. Yeah. Go donate money to Alberta Tactical. I've given them a bit of money so far. Yeah. I figure it's worth a shot. I guess I mean, you can file a Section 74 challenge with uh, one of the reclassifications. I can't remember which one. But uh, I think that was uh, the OIC, was it not? No, there was always a, a thing before you. Or, could, you oh, could no, file. that was the uh, the revoking of your registration certificate. Yes. Yeah. 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 If they revoke it, you can uh, file a Section 74, which some people are in the middle of right now. Yeah. yeah. My first thought when mine got revoked was. Was uh, oh, so I guess I can just do whatever I want with the guns now. Yep, yeah. I no because longer own it. There's no longer any certificate. So if there's yeah. no certificate, there's no gun, right? Is that the way that uh, works? Kind of what I ran through my head too was Sounds there's no certificate yeah. for it. I there I don't own it. They yeah, that was that was my thought. So well. <laughs> I don't know how that would work in court. But. Probably not That's well. a big pot we're stirring. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Please note this is entertainment purposes yeah, only. It yeah. is not yes. considered to be a legal opinion. So far Ian, from it. Yeah, if Ian's watching, <laughs> you can stop screaming at your monitor. <laughs> he's, he's flying to. Uh, yeah. He's going to a three gun match in the U.S. right now. No, mm-hmm. oh, nice. Yeah. Because of brutality. So you got him hooked on three gun then. He's one of your people now, eh? Mm-hmm. One, one of us. One of us. <laughs> yeah. Three gun's so much fun. Shoot, it I believe it. Three, gun, it. three guns. Yep. Three gun is amazing. Yeah. Problem is, I got to get new guns for three gun because all my three gun guns are prohibited. Like all of yeah. them, all, other like than my shotgun. Uh, oh. I, well, my pistols aren't. But my. You, say, uh, you had a Daria or a Typhoon? Uh, had. Had. had that's yeah, I said had. luckily I said yeah, had. had luckily I sold it April thirtieth so I'm good. good but uh yeah yeah but I know a lot of people that bought a lot of stuff like that so mm-hmm. I have I have a pump shotgun but I kind of want to run a semi auto so I might buy one of the bullpup Turkish semi autos I want a mag fed so mm-hmm. I like a mag fed shotgun so I might buy one of those but I mean. I, I don't know. They're just going to prohibit those too. I don't know. <laughs> That's the problem. And my pistol carbine, it got prohibited. My AR 15s all got prohibited. Basically, everything I use for competition shooting, rifle wise, all my long guns got prohibited. <laughs> yeah. I had a, uh, a storm, so it's prohibited. All my AR 15s are prohibited. My 22 AR is prohibited. So I'm like, I got a. The rifle I usually borrow to go hunt deer, that got prohibited. So, you know, I couldn't hunt deer with a BCL-102 this year. I had to go hunt it with an actual weapon of war, my Lee Enfield. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah which is know, something that's actually done battle, yeah. yeah. I know. Horribly ironic. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's prohibited. So I couldn't borrow that and take that out. And, yeah, so basically everything everything cool that I had all got prohibited. So. so now I have to convince I have to convince assorted people in the household that, you know what? I need to go drop two grand on a Maverick and, you know, I need to go drop a pile of money on a semi-auto shotgun and I, you know, need another semi-auto. So I need to go drop a couple. Basically I need to drop 10 grand on guns to replace the ones that got prohibited. So you have our support anyways. So yeah, thank you. Whatever that's worth. I appreciate that. Well, I mean, there's, I I condone the spending of that money. 
there's three of you. So if you each kicked in 3,500 bucks, I'm, uh, I'd be good. I'm covered. So, uh, I'll send you Got my, my own guns later. to worry about. <laughs> Uh, Rich says, doesn't matter whether it looks like an AR or not. The principle of an AR being banned is wrong. The law needs to move to metrics and not opinion. If there are going to be restrictions on something, it should be science, not emotion. And all I got to say is preaching to the choir. Yeah. Yep, because our current gun laws do actually state if it's barrel length of X and action of X, then you're fine. Yeah, but that's not the way they take yeah. it. They name them like yeah. AK-47s, FN fouls. None of that stuff should be prohibited. Yeah. Period. And I, I like the idea of barrel length or overall length. Period. Super simple. Fine. Okay, so I can't have a fourteen and a half inch rifle, and in that, yeah, it kind of sucks. But okay, just just make it simple. Yeah, no. and make it commonsensical. Not yes. This gun is banned by name. But this gun that is exactly the same gun, like we can own SKSDs. An SKSD is an AK-47. Mm. It's essentially the same thing. It's it gas takes the same mag. Doesn't make it the same. Um, it pretty much is. It's a piston actuated piston. It's got a piston. It's gas actuated, air cooled, semi automatic, magazine fed rifle. Like you could see about <laughs> so many. Like just that description all be non-restricted like there is oh, i i agree no with that but to call stuff. it an ak like i'm saying functionally it is the same oh, there's yeah, no difference yeah. functionally right same no, with fn fell sure. all the other yeah. scary rifles they're just mm -hmm. a rifle it's the that when we actually allowed the government to set up that restricted prohibited non-restricted thing back in the 70s that was the start of the end because it's a gun it's not a these guns are bad and these guns are more bad it doesn't make any sense, like no sense whatsoever. I mean, that BCL 102 I use, I ended up with a guy with a Browning. They're both rotating bolt, semi-automatic, air-cooled, mag five-round magazine-fed rifles. Yeah, No difference. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because yeah. I posted a thing about that on Facebook, and I had a guy go, I'm a hunter, and there's no way that bottom one's semi-automatic. And that top one, it's obviously fully automatic and blah, blah, blah. And that top one yeah. clearly oh, isn't yeah. semi-automatic. Oh, geez. Like, it's a Browning BAR. It's it's semi-automatic. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's a newer design than the BCL-102 by a couple of years. So the BCL-102 is actually your modern semi-automatic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, totally, totally ridiculous. It should all just they can all just go eat a dick and uh, yeah. How about a bag? Oh, of, was, how about a bag of them? Right? Yeah. The yeah. Bag. yeah. And then we need Horrible actual bag actual bowl. common sense gun hey. control. <laughs> you know, where a gun is a gun, and if you have a firearms license, you know whatever the hell you want in the way of small arms because they're all the same. It doesn't matter. And uh, if you own one illegally and you're a criminal, we arrest you and throw you in jail and call it a day. Dave, I like Richards. Functionally, they all discharge projectiles. On that basis, they should all be allowed. A Nerf gun is the same as an AR-15, foul, bolt-action rifle, shotgun, etc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't object to that. No, I kind of like the I'd, way I'd it worked in the early 70s. If, so long as it took everything to the Nerf gun level, not Nerf gun up to the everything else level. Yeah, that's the way it would actually work. Everything would just be <laughs> prohibited by government at that standpoint. Yeah. I like the way I like the way it used to work. You had to get a, a firearms light. I will reluctantly agree with licensing. Fine. Make it easy to get a license. You're not a criminal. Here's your license. Done. You know, do your safety course. And then only to acquire guns. If you want to possess them, no, nothing. You're fine. I like I like that idea. At least you knew that people, you know, had to have some sort of a criminal background check to buy them. I will reluctantly agree to that. Anything else, gun laws, no, done. Yeah, you've already proven yourself safe and capable to use them. Exactly. And the ridiculous thing about having to have a permit to own a gun, well, if my permit expires at midnight tonight... At 12.01, I'm a threat to public safety, but 11.59, I'm not. Like, none of that makes any sense. Nope. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It should be, okay, you're okay until you're not. Yeah, exactly. We just like, need a list of people. They check you every single guns. day, so you're good until you're not. Yeah. 
I think we just basically, the best thing to me would be a list of people who aren't allowed to have guns and just do that. And everybody else yeah. can have a gun. Fine. Yeah. Because I tend um, to trust people and most people are good and they're going to do the right thing. But I do like the safety thing because at least then you have a, everybody's sort of on the same. It's, I mean, the PAL course isn't great, but at least you're on a basic some, level playing field. Some of, semblance of training. Yeah. I like, yeah. I like being able to order stuff online and have it show up at my door too. Yeah. Oh, versus yeah, the uh, the U.S. system of uh, having to go to NFL, yeah, yeah, go oh, to your FFL, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where we have them beat. Just on, just on that, I guess. Well, no, we don't have SBRs, suppressors. Falatos. Yeah, they got us on suppressors. Destructive, yeah. so many things. Yeah, it's not even it's not even worth mentioning. Well, I'm just saying, order to your home is the only, <laughs> only place that we have them beat that we can actually get it a package right to our house. So. Yeah. But you know Chinese what? Chinese rifles if, and ammo. If, if I can, uh, uh, I'd still take most of the rules depending on where you're oh. in the States versus ours. Mm -hmm. If I can get my AR-15 with a suppressor yeah. and hunt with it, and oh, I could just go buy an M16 if I have the money. Oh, and wait a minute, mm -hmm. I can own a big, big game rifle, which I can't yeah. in Canada anymore, too. So, oh, yeah. Don't yeah. think you're yeah. getting an M16 without an SOT. I think there's a. Yes. Is a SOT think? short form for a lot of money? Well, throw money at it's the your, basically your business license for the full autos. Like there are certain full autos. I think they're before a certain date or whatever. Nin you can 1986 in the States. You pay 200 bucks. You okay. bring a lot of money and then you wait six months or whatever. I think they're eight months or a year now for the approval. But yeah. they have to be registered with uh, the BATF, I think it is. And you get your tax stamp and you get your fancy little rifle. Or destructives mm -hmm. if you want to own, yeah. you know, grenades and fun stuff like that. So. Sounds lovely. Yeah. It does. it does. Sounds like a lot of fun. And it's never a problem. And that's the thing that gets me. It's not a problem, but it's legal. Yeah. So it, why is in it fact, a it gives them footage for world events. Yeah. <laughs> did, you see, did you see that there? One, they were trying to cover the stuff going on in Syria or something. They used one of the images from a video from one of the big full auto machine nope. gun <laughs> i heard about that yeah <laughs> yeah like knob hill or something yeah something yeah. like that yeah i saw that yeah <laughs> yep. and people in syria are going whoa glad we're not there <laughs> 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 nice all right moving along we still doing the uh the dremel thing we're drawing it tonight Oh, we are? Oh, well, welcome to the show, Dave. Uh, okay, so... So, so I guess for, we're not donating Cal, or anything. Got yeah, you, you do that, Cal. Yeah. You know what you yeah. do. You go, go. Okay, so for everybody, this is now your cutoff for entering <laughs> the Dremel contest. I do have everybody who has entered up on a spreadsheet... You can see here we got Spencer, Richard L, Justin H, Jennifer H, Anthony N, Joel H, Russ N, Lincoln W, Josh V, Victor F, Kelvin M, Edmund L, and Steve M. So what do you guys think? I know some people do it twice, and I think it's silly. Do you just, just once? Just, just once. 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 Do it twice. So I got so we got 13 names. I have uh, 13 numbers, and I'm going to click the button, and click six. The button. Now you have Joel to Joel H. Hey. hey. Congratulations. Congratulations. So, Joel, if you want to send the show an email with your uh, address and everything, we can. Adriel, once he's done hunting, can get that uh, shipped out to you. Slamfireradio at gmail.com. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for donating and entering the contest, and congratulations, Joel. Awesome. Nice. Is he getting some pepperettes with that uh, Dremel? Or... <laughs> and you're signing it, but yeah, I think you should throw some pepperettes in there. It's not. Mm -hmm. uh, the box is not sealed. Now, if I stick some, <laughs> like, inside with hand. the Dremel, <laughs> I, could, I could put some, uh, some jerky in there. Yeah, a little Ziploc bag of jerky in right inside the Dremel nice, case. Nice little bonus. Mm. Nice. Don't we'll survive the trip. Prize just got better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. The prize got better. Mm -hmm. Upped our game. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, new gun stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> the Ipsic thing's <laughs> under new gun stuff, so we got ahead of ourselves. Oh, that's okay. Gorgeous. Both news and new gun stuff. New Gun Stuff sponsor, Bolt Action Coffee. Slamfire Radio is a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. The coffee is roasted in small batches and is quite honestly some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. Send it to your house by going to boltactioncoffee.com using the discount code SLAMFIRE. And we already covered IPSC getting recognized as a member of GAISF. Ta-da. Have you tried that uh, 11th hour, Mo? No, no, no. I have some stuff I was finishing, and then I'm, I'm going to – because I, I ordered from them, and I got it this week. Yeah, so I'm going to try it next. I'll let you guys know. Yeah, I awesome. got mine Tuesday. Had okay. our first pot this morning. It was good. Nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a try. Nice. Uh, main topic. We decide we're doing for a main topic tonight. We are like – Written house. We- <laughs> We are like an we, hour. We're going to do a uh, written house, yeah. <laughs> We've already had uh, many, many topics. <laughs> an abbreviated version. I mean, like, so they're they're deliberating right now. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised we didn't see it today. But what? It's tomorrow? Been three days. So. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see anything tomorrow. I've been watching the live stream that uh, Ian's been part of yeah. basically all week. And started watching it last week. And basically from what they're saying and what I've been seeing, there's one one holdup, which happens to be the jury foreman. And she's not gonna budge. It's gonna end up being a forced hung, hung jury because they're not oh, even yeah. gonna they're not even gonna declare a hung jur- jury because the foreman's the holdout. Mm. Is that is that confirmed? Because I've heard a couple of I I've heard a couple of things from people who I don't trust. Like I've, I've heard, like oh, there's two people who are holding up. So like yeah. the the one person so, thing is. Mm-hmm. What I'm hearing that from is uh, lawyer Richard Richard Robert Barnes, who was who he was actually supposed to be in there with a team that he had set up of twenty people to do the jury selection. Hmm. They had pulled the community and everything, and then I guess the last minute was told, no, you and your team are not going to be there for jury selection. And so he's got all this data, and he said, yeah, no, this is one of the people we pointed out, that they're old Yankee Yankee Town person, and no, we figured they'd be against, and they'd be one of the holdouts. Hmm. So that's where that information is coming from. Yeah, maybe. The whole case like not a lawyer none of us are we were really hoping to get one on to help the uh the conversation along so now you get to listen to four uneducated fools give their opinion (laughs) welcome to the internet yeah (laughs) um but it's just been messed up like the prosecution if you watch the actual trial Hey, there's no doubt that they they're on a witch hunt. I enjoyed In my the mind, like, ah. was watching it. They it just seems like they're on a witch hunt. Just just trying. They they need to get this. They don't want to be on pressure it, or the, the, whatever. The, the, the people the people that are, that like the the assistant DA that's running this case doesn't actually want to be in that case. So maybe we should preface this: Is this important for gun owners, and how is it important? I th- is th- this case is an affirmation of self-defense laws in the U.S. I think that's the only reason it's important to us, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe mean less for us, but down in the states, I think it's a very it it's a precedent-setting case in my mind because it does help because especially I think with the added of the provocation, like they were fighting against the provocation and the whole definition of it because what the what I've been seeing is the prosecution is trying to argue that he provoked it and all the all that the peaceful protesters were doing was stopping an active shooter. Which is fine for every like for uh shooting two and three. For the first one well, does the it problem? Though? Because he was actually trying to retreat during that time, and I think that's mm-hmm. where one of the big things, like, okay, when do you... And it's been brought up with the panel that I've been watching that 
that Ian's been on too is that okay, they never it and even then it's not clear as like, okay, so maybe you provoked. Maybe you provoked an attack. And I think the self defense this could have a application in Canada. Like, okay, you provoked it, but then you had second thoughts and now you're retreating from that. Wouldn't now that you're retreating and no no, I I I'm sorry, I changed my mind. I don't want to fight, would you not then regain your right to self-defense if the person you voted it after you're retreating, withdrawing yourself from that, trying to withdraw yourself from that situation, were forced back into that situation because that person is now threatening you. You're redefending yourself. Wait. I mean, uh, <clears throat> you would need really solid evidence. You would need like, you would need written house on recording i'm gonna bait one of these guys to chase me i'm gonna waste them like you'd have to have something like that and the, yeah. such thing hasn't been uh shown one mm. of the mind-blowing things that uh, so of what like midway through they're like oh the fbi had a drone over this thing they got yeah. 4k footage of this whole thing what the, 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 yeah. the fbi had a yeah. drone on this thing and that's just showing up right now a yeah. uh it would have been cool to know that at the start b Mm -hmm. The FBI is flying drones over uh, protests. Mm, of yeah. course they are. Duh. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even vaguely shocked by that. <laughs> no. Probably. I wouldn't why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they give, get more prosecutions, though, out of these things? Okay, they see a bunch of people like burning stuff. I'd imagine a 4K drone, a, a drone with 4K video can uh, can get some faces and, and like okay. name some people and that kind of thing. The, Depends see, on the, the riot. The, the FBI that drone that I saw was more thermal, black and white. I think the drone footage you were talking about was some independent company that had it up. And that's where they actually right in right at the end of the trial got into hot water because the prosecution had sent a different version, completely yes. different file name to the defense. And the defense was in their closing argument was trying to get, play this video and you can hear the prosecution or well, our versions better, better quality. Yeah. Hey, Different, different file size, different resolution, different length of time, different file name, and the prosecution's trying to say, oh, well, it must have compressed when you opened it on your iPhone or your Android yeah. phone. Or, oh, well, maybe your phone changed the file name. No, that's <laughs> not how it works. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's, um, yeah, the, 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 the trial <laughs> stuff has been terrible. It's a, oh, it's, it's, a clear, it's a clear cut self defense case. It, um, <laughs> had this happened any other time, it wouldn't have would never have gone to trial. No. The only reason it's going to trial is because of political pressure. It's going to fail. Yeah. The prosecution knows it's going to fail. They're half trying to bait the judge into um, just calling this up, calling the whole thing off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and you can see them trying to do it. And you can see that the, the judge mm -hmm. caught himself when 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 he admonished the prosecutors about uh, violating the fifth. Uh, with uh, with Rittenhouse saying, "Oh, he was silent yeah. afterwards." Oh, then why was he silent? And it's like you know you're not supposed to do that. If I knew better, like, and he, he caught himself before yeah. saying, "Like, I I think you're trying to." Yeah. Uh, yeah. What he cause said a was trial. Yeah. What he said was, "You're on the line." No, I think you might be over the line. Mm hmm. Mm. Like, it, and he's been baiting the defense on it like giving them lines like today there was uh was it today or yesterday a date talking to the prosecution i warned you about this i've been queasy about this since day one the day of reckoning is coming like just baiting the defense like mistrial with prejudice come on yeah. let's do this and it's well so think think of uh, the people in the different seats and whether they would want that or not want that the judge doesn't want to do that no, he wants, the, just, he wants the jury he wants to the decide. jury to do it, yes. Because if yeah. the jury does it, it's like, this is fair. We followed all the steps, and it, and it got to this. It should yeah. be uh, mistrial with, with prejudice, yeah. right? Like that's, every that, day that's... he's talking about the footage and everything else. He's concerned about the live footage and the optics of it. He is very concerned with that. Yeah. yeah. The prosecution probably doesn't want an L in there. Uh, somebody commented online they don't want a loss in their uh, in their win loss column. Well, yeah, it, a, a jury loss is probably like worse looking than the judge. Oh, the judge yeah. was biased. Oh, that's why he did that. That's yeah. like, eh, no, it's because you know there was no there was no there's no case to begin with. A lot of a lot of people saying like, oh, the prosecution wants us to fail. They keep they keep purposefully messing it up. It's like, nah, 
they didn't have a case case to start with. There's they're, they're just grasping at straws and there's just nothing there. The process is the punishment. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that the more troubling thing about this, like th- this, this should be like a, a real clear cut thing, but, but because it's like, because it's a left right divide, people are divided on it. No matter the facts of it, people keep spreading like, Oh, you cross state lines with a gun, um, which has been <laughs> yeah. proven not, not to be true for like, months months of that, yeah. that uh, that's been out but people are still passing that on because yeah. they feel very like because it's like struck on this uh identity uh, uh id politics where people like identify really cl- really closely yeah. with left my, and right and my therefore team. Right. my team has to win or lose and um they don't know the facts or they just don't care and they just want their team to win yeah. well i think a lot of this stuff now especially with the news i mean it's all it's not really it's not really news, it's infotainment. So they're trying to sell papers, they're doing whatever they can to get clicks. So they'll put out they'll put out whatever they want to say, even if it's complete bullshit or completely yeah. or wrong. Yeah, there's... They're the first ones out there. And then they'll print like a little retraction somewhere that no one ever sees. And that's a yeah. lot of these these so called facts get out there, but they're just that's what you saw on the news that night and you haven't seen yeah. anything since. You're paying attention to something else. So that false fact. There's, sticks in there's your been head. some really bad ones. The NPR <laughs> said that uh, one of the guys had his hands up when he was shot and uh, yeah. the, the guy with the handgun and, and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. ugh, ugh, you guys, yeah. like, that's. Well, the, and they were talking about that on the panel. There's still people out there that thinks this is a racing like, that he shot. A bunch of black people. You just opened up I on heard, a bunch of black people. I know yeah, somebody. I know true, somebody yeah. said that. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, this. And no. there was some. There was some black dude on Twitter made a comment about this about how this makes black people feel unsafe in their own city, and people are less. Other black people are like, "Uh, everybody falls <laughs> white. What the hell are you going on about? This has nothing to do with that." <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I think one of the more recent things, and this is this does not impact what happened because like what happened was self-defense a bunch of bunch of people chased them around and uh, and uh found out but uh I, i think that one of the one of the interesting things is like everyone all the protesters who were involved uh are all criminals of some of yeah. some all have criminal charges of some kind uh, yeah. they, they just find out a uh, jump kick guy the guy who like jump kicked a, a written house on the video there He's a criminal too. It's a five for five. Everyone, yeah. everyone shot or involved in this thing uh, from the protesters, protesters' point of view, they're they're all uh, criminals. They're, they're, they've all done yeah. crimes and everything from uh, uh, raping like five kids to uh, less stuff, I guess, than that. But yeah. geez, it's been- yeah. yeah. Stephen Crowder had a great comment on Twitter. Somebody said, "Say that, say their names, and then the names of those shot." And Stephen Crowder said. Only if you say the names of the five kids that one guy raped first. Go ahead. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like oh. how how can you how can you involve five people and have the they all have a rap sheet like it's it's just nuts and it, it doesn't affect the the trial doesn't affect what happened but it affects like was this such a terrible thing to happen anyways? Yeah. You're, you're trying one guy to portray these people as these heroes when you turn in turn realize, well, they're not so squeaky, no. squeaky clean. Like yeah. maybe mm, give them a, like, maybe give them a littering charge. I mean, the kitty diddler just got out of the psych ward. Uh, like, and into a body bag. So, no big, no big loss there. No, you know, no, no. I'm, I'm not shocked considering what they were up to. Like it, it, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people at those protests, like I would say the vast majority of people that are at protests like that, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just out having their opinion, and that's great. Or just to those sorts see of things happen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Just down sightseeing. But uh, they're, those sorts of activities, same as the G20 protests in Toronto, right? Any of those sorts of big protests and activities like that, you are going to draw undesirables. Like, you're going to draw bad people who are out yeah. trying to do bad things or are just idiots and are going to do something stupid. And, you know, idiots that sucks. Things, you know. yeah. yeah, that sucks. But those sorts of things will draw those people. And that's why inevitably they they tend to go south. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm with Israel. This should never go on the court because it's clear cut. Like, OK, you have a mob chasing you saying cranium that guy and just. In one of these things, like, yeah, he's going to defend himself, especially if he's falling on the ground or somebody's chucking something at him. 
like, defend yeah, himself no. too well. <laughs> he had a yeah. rifle. He had a perfect weapon to defend well, himself. According to the prosecution, <laughs> everyone takes a beating sometimes. He should have just dropped his gun and went fist to cuffs like a real man. Yeah. Hmm, said the really? guy he can't go past that? to McDonald's. Oh yeah, he said that. In his uh in his closing rebuttal. In his closing rebuttal. Yeah. Yeah. So he said you that. should just get kicked to death by a mob yeah. rather than yeah. not because getting Because the death other by a man mob. was unarmed and he had a rifle, basically he lost his right to self defense and he should just taken a beating like a real man. Yeah. No. The, don't don't take the arguments literally. The prosecution really? was forced to do no. this. They have no yeah. choice. They had to. They had to do this. Yeah, but he didn't even present it that way. He presented it in a way that he was angry at the jury that he had to do this. Ah. Like the whole presentation, like it was incredible. I just wow. That's his job. That's his job. He has to do it. It's he's not going to win. He knew he wasn't going to win going into it. He's just trying to make the best of uh, a bad situation. He's not going to win. It has been entertaining, though. Like, very. No, yeah. 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 Like, it's been yeah. very entertaining. I see that NB- MNBC got banned from the trial, too. So that's hilarious. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Did you, Do you know, know why? why? And CNN posted it. Do you know why? CNN posted it for taking photos of the jurors. Yeah. No. They it's were right. trying to. They, were, they told someone. They told one of their staffers to follow the, the jury bus to try to find out where they were. Oh, oh Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. If I was those jury members, I would be awfully concerned about delivering a not guilty verdict and then winding up dead. Like yeah. I, I really would, given what's going on, I would be deeply concerned. Or having your house firebombed or just something bad happening to you or your relatives. Yep. Yeah. So definitely wouldn't might be, be giving might any be why taken, Might be why it's taken this for this long. Yeah. So we got a few comments here, Richard, right when we first started, how the hell was the jury not sequestered? Hmm. Well, we've, I, I've been watching the judge and he definitely doesn't like ruffling feathers. So I think it's especially a a case of this optics. I'm surprised that the jury wasn't sequestered, but. They did something weird. They, they, they picked out like more, like double the amount of jurors that they needed. And then at the like, when it was time oh, to, that, to judge, yeah. they just halved it. And okay, you you half are yeah. real jurors. You half are go home, I guess. Yeah, they had okay. eighteen. No, they're not going home. So they had eighteen jurors, mm-hmm. and then uh, Monday morning after closing after closing arguments, and they did the weekend of emails going over the jury instructions. They had one of those raffle tumblers there. <laughs> Wrote down the all the jury all the juror numbers on pieces of paper, and then get this: made Kyle pull six of them out for the six members that were being dismissed. That's so really weird. wow, really, Why? yeah. Why? Oh my god! Rittenhouse had to pull this. He had to choose his fate on whose jurors were. <laughs> but he didn't uh, even get to pick them. Like look no, at no, it was just a no, tumbler just random, and like random, random draw. Wow, <laughs> they just do it out of a hat. The judge should <laughs> not have done that. No, he should have had. A and bailiff, that's to the bailiff. theater of it, anyways. Oh, so. well, especially that old tumbler drum. It was just so squeaky. Yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous. And, but then, so those six, they're yeah, they're going home at night, but they are sequestered at the courthouse during deliberations until the case is done. Wow. But so they don't all of them get, get so, and then that was another one from today. So they're going home every night. The question was raised at the end of the day, if they could take the 36 or 38 page jury instructions <laughs> home with them so that they could study up. Now, also we'll put this that they were retiring an hour early. And the judge said, yeah, okay, go ahead. Is that, is that a problem? I don't know how that works. It just, that, do they allow it normally? Or Well, I mean, like it just seems just weird. weird. Like, okay, you want... You're not supposed to be... Basically, in this day and age, you shouldn't be on the on social media. You shouldn't be on the internet because you're going to see something. I'm just going to go Google it and see if they're on YouTube yet. Oh, no. <laughs> the PDF's out there. 
the oh, PDF okay. on all the in- it, jury instructions is out there. Oh, gotcha. Okay. But yeah, it just weird. And defense is sitting there like shaking his head. No. And talks to them after. He's like, yeah, I didn't see anything other from the prosecution except for the defense shaking his head. No. So I allowed it. <laughs> it's just weird. I don't know yeah. if it actually plays that big of a a part, but it just encourages you know looking stuff up. And I think the biggest thing that uh, was brought out for the panel was okay. Now you're going to get a non legal definition for these terms like provocation and retreat and that that are not actually legally accepted definitions. And that's what the defense said. Like, they're going to go home and play dictionary on this. Mm. Yeah. It's just, mm. it's a very interesting case. And it, I don't, th- I think it's going to be a hung jury. That wouldn't be very satisfying. No. Oh, well. No, that would just affect me very little. Un- everybody unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. Up here, it, it does impact us very little, but I think there could be stuff to learn on the self-defense side of things, considering self-defense is fairly accepted down in the States, less so up in Canada, and there's already this thing on self-defense down in the States. Like, imagine imagine if that happened up here. Well, we don't need to imagine. We have the Cahill case. That's, that's our, like, iffy. It was this self-defense or is this not, right? He brought a shotgun to uh, mm-hmm. just see what was happening. Saw someone in his truck, and uh, the guy reached for something, and he sh- shot the guy. There's there's our self defense case, and he got cleared. Um, but now he's got to go back to court again. Yeah, yeah. That whole thing turned into it's because the guy's native, though. Like that instantly was a race thing. The, they the, the media the constantly tries to race bait on it. He didn't know the guy was native uh, in the dark. Uh, he couldn't possibly know it. And uh, but the media keeps trying to play that angle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's disgusting. I hate when they do that. Got to get okay, the clicks. So... Got to get the ads. Got to get the ads. Yeah. So we got a comment here. So within a small group of shitty people looking for trouble in a largely peaceful protest, one brings a gun. He finds trouble. Claim self-defense shoots pe- shoots three people. Did anyone else die during the protest? For one, so, he was far from the only person with a gun there. Far yeah, from the, the only the, person did, with did an AR that, there. Uh, did you see that that quote from the the, the cop? Uh, a cop had mentioned half over half the people there either had a gun or a weapon of some kind. Like this, yeah. this it was like off the hook crazy. The yeah. the the energy and the the weapons yeah. and like some shit was going to happen at this yeah. thing. Yeah, and in fact, one of the three people who he shot, we call him Bye Bicep Guy, Gage <laughs> Gross Christ. And that, that was a great moment in the testimonies because they got, they, they got him to say, no, he didn't shoot me until I pointed my handgun at his head. Yeah. He went up to, ga- with, to Kyle, cell phone in one hand, gun in the other, hands up and then made the decision that he's going to lower his hands and start pointing his gun at him. And then Kyle shot his bicep off. Is that the moment when the prosecutor put his head in his hands and looked like he was yeah. going to cry? Yeah. yeah. Why? What, what's he going to do? It's, it's on video. Like the, the thing yeah. is like, it's, it's on video. He, uh, by the way, that, that handgun, he didn't have a permit to concealed carry that no. either. And then he was, he was doing it, but like, there, there was there was going to be something that was going to happen at this thing yeah. because so yeah. many people bringing like firearms and weapons and uh, on on both sides as far as I can see. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm not saying whether he should or should should not have been. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't have been there, but he was there with a good intention of putting out fires and helping people. I'm not going to stand up for his reason for him being down there. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't have been, but he was trying to do good. And it's not like he was a stranger to the community. He knew this was going on, so he decided to... And he was actually asked to help protect this one business that he was at. And They tried going back so, on that, but it was like, yeah. it's so weird. It's like, so wait, you drove these people? You drove them there? With the, oh my God, it's so weird. Yeah. yeah so the case has been really weird. I, I think that yeah. uh, well, I'm if just you're... just talking about these comments that are coming in that Jessica's... And it, by all means, Jessica's not trying to 
call you out it's just you're putting some good comments on there that's a lot of people have mm -hmm. and in my mind okay i part of me wants to say well why did you why even then when it first happens i like, well, why the heck was he there but he was trying to be good like he, earlier in the day he was cleaning graffiti i'm not gonna paint him as a saint or a hero no i'm not gonna do that but he had a, as much right to be there as everyone else did and because he knew it was a volatile situation, he did arm himself. He did give away his plate carrier to his friend instead of wearing it himself. Which to me means that he was only planning on, he wasn't getting in, wasn't planning on getting into confrontation. I don't know if you want to read that much into it. But he had armor in his car that he gave to his friend instead of wearing it himself. And he, he was loaded up with medic gear and he did help a couple people and was putting out fires. Like I said, is he a saint? No. Is he a hero? No. He's a guy that tried doing some good and yeah, he was armed because he knew it was a volatile situation. But and so unfortunately, he everyone, everyone was forced was to use it. Too. Yeah, that's just it. Yeah. yeah, There was so much, so many firearms out there in a very volatile situation. And it is pretty stupid to chase somebody carrying a rifle. That's just not a good idea. Yeah. That, that's it. It's just not going to end well. Yeah. Cool. We're good. Any other comments on that? Or are we good? Nah. We're good. All right. Listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. Also a very nice fellow. He offers hot bluing, parkerizing, and Cerakote finishings as well as finishes as well as metal ref wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, our firearms accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca. You can also follow him on Facebook and Instagram, but it's French, so I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce it or spell it. But yeah, go look <laughs> up his website. He's got links. Uh, emails. You want to take the first one there, Mo? Sure. Hi, I am new in the gun community. I've been wanting an AR platform. I saw an ATR, ATRS receiver for mo Modern Sporter. I read that liberals banned assault-type weapons and also saw articles that AR-15 platforms are considered as non-restricted. I just have a quick question. Hopefully you can help me. If I build an AR-15 type platform using the ATRS receiver, it would be considered as non-restricted as long as my barrel length is in accordance with RC RCMP laws. Thank you and have a great day, Jose. Well, Jose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This show is for entertainment purposes only and is not considered legal advice. Please consult not at all. FO or your local uh, local lawyer. So I've so, seen a couple ATRSs up for sale lately. I, people are ballsy. You see yeah. that or their traps? There's, it could be the RCMB. You never know. <laughs> Some of that, so. They're considered so, prohib by the FRT. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Um, it's likely not legal. Uh, uh, ATRS is suing the government because of that, yeah. but that's that's where that's, we're at right now. The problem is how much money do you want to spend defending yourself? So yeah. yes, you could go get yourself an ATRS receiver. Yeah, if you get caught with it and they check the FRT, they're going to take it, and then you're going to have to hire a lawyer and you're going to have mm -hmm. to try and get it back or more likely just try not to go to jail if they decide to make an example of you for possessing a prohibited weapon which is quite a serious charge. And if you happen to have it not work out, and this is one thing that pisses me off about Canada, it sucks that you have to get charged with something in order to challenge it mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. So if you get it wrong, uh, what happens to you? Well, you could end up going to jail. You're certainly going to lose your firearms license. They may just plea it down to, you know, you, you plead it off and you can't have a firearm for 10 years or a lifetime something like that. You're going to be paying a lawyer a ton of money. So it depends on how much money you have. And you could potentially end up getting a prohibited charge. So you're not leaving the country again, certainly never going to go over the border into states, may have problems finding employment, may wind up in jail, may end up losing everything that you own, you know, your house, your family, your job, your kids. Is it worth it? Probably not. You can go buy yourself a divorce or, or, a, or a, a WC. WK, WK one ABC, yeah, WSMCR. 
Yeah. And you know those are legal for the moment, so I would go that way. Would be my recommendation. Did, was was there a? Um, did he think that AR-15s were non-restricted? So that, that, that's what I heard. No, no, I no think in that he actually met. You know, no, he. I saw I articles what it that is, AR-15 is he missed? Are considered non-restricted. Oh. So yeah, they're restricted. Not. Well, they were restricted. Now no, they're I think he misspoke. He's saying AR-15 platforms. I think he's talking about the a, the Canadian version that is actually not based on the AR-15, just built to ad- adapt their parts to fit. He's, yes. he's, so, like, I mean, that's why I want to think is that he totally missed that the, the ATRS Modern Series was reclassified in the FRT. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. AR-15s, yeah, they're banned by OIC. And I could I could see somebody missing that stuff like the Modern Sporter, Modern Environment, Modern Hunter were added to the FRT. As we said earlier in the podcast, FRT is opinion, but as Dave just so eloquently laid out, how much do you want to pay to test that opinion? Yeah. Yeah, buy something non-restricted would be my recommendation. Because yeah, it's you don't still no guarantee because it. they could turn around tomorrow and change that FRT as well. Like that, that's mm-hmm. that's unfortunately the situation that we're we're in. Yeah. Yep. But uh, yeah, ATRS maybe uh, maybe take some of that money you're thinking of spending and donate it to uh, Alberta Tactical Rifle for their uh, lawsuit, and then you'll be able to legally buy one if they win. Good idea. Yeah. Or and then buy a WK and put an ATRS barrel on it because they make <laughs> barrels for the the WKs. Oh, do they? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Nice, mm-hmm. fancy ones. Or get uh, that B and T APC two two three brand though. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah four grand. Yeah, mm-hmm. I looked at those. I'm like, that's cool. That and no, <laughs> it's too much. And I that's buddy the thing with that one. I got. Yeah, I got a buddy with one. I got to talk to him and go try it out. They're Swiss, right? It's fancy. I don't think they're. Are they Swiss? Swiss? Rugged, rugged and flawless. Yeah, maybe Format. they are. Yeah, they're Swiss. Yeah. Are they? Fancy. Hmm. Yeah, they're nice guns. I've seen a few of them. They're gorgeous. Everything's Swiss. Um, heavy. Fancy. Yeah, heavy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, four grand. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Whatever. I mean, eh, it's your hobby. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. <clears throat> but Swiss arms were well. Originally, they were not that much, and then they got up to that much. So they got ridiculous. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I And that's the thing that pisses me off. I mean, you could get a cheap Air 15 for like 750, 800 bucks. Something that was, was okay. 650 and S, an SMW M&P. Yeah, exactly. I, I got mine from Tenda for 629, I think mm. it was. Mm. Yeah. And that's what pisses me off. Now, what else can you, you can't get anything else in a semi-automatic center fire other than an SKS, the only thing I can think of that's that cheap. More or like now. a Mini 14 or a, uh, like a an M1 carbine, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, now you're up to, now you're up to a, that, what, 1200 bucks for a WK? Yeah. Yeah. 1200 yeah. and then. I can't believe, I can't believe it was that cheap. Oh. <laughs> you could get one of, one of the M14s. I was telling a buddy of mine, he couldn't believe it. Those Norinco M, uh, M305s, the M, M14 clones, were $399 10 years ago. $399. Uh, I think, Crazy I think I, cheap. I, th- I paid less for that, less than that when I bought my original one back in 2000. Or, when the hell was it? 99, I think. I think I paid maybe 300 bucks. But Ooh. I paid 300 bucks for, an, for a grand at that time as well. <laughs> So, wow. <laughs> yeah. Different times. 125 bucks for a grand. Yep. Sold it for 400 and thought I was doing well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you would like to send the show uh, email, you can email slamfireradio at gmail.com. Uh, if you're one of our, we have no new Patreonies, uh, Patreon supporters, you should have received patches in mail if you've not received them. Email us, and we'll take care of you. And if you want to become a show supporter so we can keep up our fine, fine programming and discuss all sorts of weird topics, patreon.com slash slamfire radio. Shoutouts. Adriel, you showed up last. You go first. To you guys, thanks for carrying the show while I'm out on the road. 
<laughs> Kyle, especially for getting the, uh, the spreadsheet know. together and setting up that stuff for the Dremel. I couldn't imagine how I was going to do it on my phone. <laughs> and doing the and doing the interning today, Kyle is just on the ball. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, our Thank Kyle you. is a real hero. So <laughs> <laughs> apparently, my neighbor's green bin is a real hero. I have to post a photo on. Uh, speaking of heroes, it's pretty low bar these days. My neighbor's green bin says, "I'm a hero" on the side of it. Oh, it's town issued green oh. bin. So apparently, did you see that? Did you see that one from BC from Remembrance Day? Mm. No. There was a, a memorial, and someone spray painted in there, and this is going to get. No, oh, I'll just, I'll just say it. it said yeah. the vaccinated, and it was this was on like a remembrance, like Veterans Memorial. The vaccinated are the real heroes. Yeah, I saw that. Wow. Seriously, like. Cringe. Uh, yeah, very cringe. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I, I, I was speechless. <laughs> Yeah, you know who isn't heroes? Idiots. Idiots aren't heroes. And that's <laughs> yeah. you. God, that's spray paint can. You're a dick. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mo. Uh, nothing. Notes? Nothing for me tonight. How about you, Cal? Um, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Ian Runkle and the rest of the panel at uh, the Ricada Law stream for keeping me entertained all week during work because i've been having that streaming and it's their their commentary has been very under like, entertaining and very informative like i am i've over full, full on information so many times this week and so many different insights so shout out to them they very successful through this week probably more than any of the streams of the msm streams and that so like they had over a hundred thousand people watching live deliberations oh, really? like just wow. the deliberations. It was more informative it's more it, it, it wasn't edutainment it was informative that's why yeah. I, I i tuned in as well to, to that stream a couple of times just because i wanted to see what was going on with with the trial and yeah. uh it was informative like, yeah. like having experts there to comment on something that they're that they know quite a bit about every once in a while like someone says something and they're like yelling at the tv like you should be <laughs> yeah. doing this it's like oh yeah. so good so good yeah it was really <laughs> nice. good so shout out to those yeah. guys Awesome. And uh, shout out to our listener, Adam, from Meaford, who won his first Ipsic match. So, uh, well mm, done, sir. Awesome. Nice job. It's uh, awfully embarrassing when the new guy shows up and just, uh, you know, wins. <laughs> so, well done. Yeah. I don't know yeah. where you go from here, but. <laughs> you know. Nationals. The world. world. The Olympics. The world. Yeah. Go, go ahead up rest. The Olympics. Take on, uh, Olympics. Take on Trevor. Yeah, the Olympics. <laughs> next Next year at the Olympics. Yeah, or yeah. whenever the Olympics are. I don't know, because I don't <laughs> care about the Olympics. <laughs> All right. Well, check us out on Gun Owners of Canada. Like us on Facebook. Uh, we are, as of today, at 28 and 49 likes. So that's, I mean, you know, we could do better. So tell your friends to go like us. We could do better. Yeah, we can do better. We're likable. We're likable. Gosh darn it, people like us. <laughs> give us a review on facebook join the ccfr and donate some money to the cause and hey go throw some money at the atrs guys for their legal challenge too so maybe you can mm-hmm. go buy an atrs legally and not get arrested we'll see you next week and thank you very much for tuning in good night kelly so if you have any comments or questions for the show please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com now go grab a gun and shoot something when the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.